Alleluia. Psalms 139 verse 7 to 12 reveals to us that God is everywhere. It was the psalmist that began to help us understand that it is not possible for a man to hide from God. 139 when you read from verse 7 to 12 just write it for the purpose of the reference that God is everywhere is called his omnipresence the ability to be everywhere are we together he said where can i hide from your presence it's a question if i run there you are here if i go there you are there if i go there even in the midst of darkness you are there so it's an established fact from scripture that god is everywhere it's very comforting to know that that god is everywhere but then he does not meet with people everywhere understand this god is everywhere in his sovereignty and omnipresence but the place of encounter has always been old testament new testament and through eternity god does not meet with people everywhere in the dealings of god with men location atmosphere matters everywhere is not conducive for a meeting place with god just because this is a new testament and christ has died and all of that the veil has been torn does not mean everywhere is a conducive meeting place are we together the concept of the secret place is one of the mysteries in scripture that is behind unusual manifestations of the life and the power of God upon a man when you see any man any woman any pastor any individual commanding unusual dimensions of the effulgence of the life the power the presence of God then that individual is a person of the secret place God is everywhere but he doesn't meet with people everywhere hallelujah when you want to have a business meeting with an individual you don't stand by the roadside to discuss destiny altering businesses is that true you find conducive places scattered across this nation probably this time right now are different important meetings happening is that true and for those of you who are familiar with world events the historic meeting that is going to be happening between the North Korean leader and Donald Trump. Look the time and the extent of the preparation that is going in because two world powers are going to be having a conversation that can decide the destinies of millions of people. And so the atmosphere, the location, the commitment, the hotels, the hospitality, the refreshment, every detail is going in. That's for men. And then we want to meet with God and host his presence. And then we believe that just because God loves us, atmosphere and location does not matter. Are we together? Every house, every home has several compartments that reflect the value of the people you want to meet. Is that true? There are visitors who can come and you just stand by the gate and discuss with them. Not because you devalue them. They, they, you, they have not earned the right to have access to your living room or your bedroom. There are a few people that you can grant access to enter the house. There are others you can grant access to your bedroom dependent on the quality and the level of discussion. God is a God of the secret place. I told you everything that is mighty and noble in the kingdom is hidden. The concept of God hiding himself is a concept that if we do not understand, especially for, um, especially for believers who are not very balanced, this is the, the imbalance that not knowing God properly creates. Because you will want to say, how, how does a God who loves people delight in hiding himself the bible says that god hides himself in light and you will wonder why i mean if god wants me to know him should he not be around chasing after me why make the pursuit so difficult 
and others even advocate that God is not hiding anywhere you have God once you have your Bible you have God you see when people preach look at their proofs look at their results wisdom is justified by her children don't be gullible and just swallow everything just because people are well-meaning it is important that you vet their understanding by the proofs that they are what they believe they know is producing God hides himself it's a system in the kingdom everything that is glorious is never revealed it is hidden it is your pursuit that makes it revealed it's a kingdom system it's not even just for God when you buy how many of you have bought an expensive gadget do they give you the phone just like that on no if you buy a phone or a television sometimes it's amazing how small the gadget is and then you see how big the um what they call it now whatever it is there's there's Dunlop there there's another line there's another instruction written in german written in chinese written in english written in another language and all those details just for that little thing i've gotten a few gadgets in my life and i've been surprised at the rigor of opening them opening them alone sometimes you have to rest and wonder what you cut this you make sure you cut this and why because of the value is that true so god who is most valuable cannot just sit down and say just because i love you no when it has to do with redemption god is not hiding himself he reached down to people but when it has to do with intimacy and our work with god god does not expose himself carelessly he hides himself in light it's true are we blessed hence the concept of the secret place I think it was a school of ministry students or so I was I was telling was it yesterday or when was it and and I was telling them that everything that is glorious hides hides it's called the mystery of the veil many people just believe that just because the veil has been torn the veil has many meanings the veil in the temple torn doesn't mean the concept and the idea of veiling things have disappeared everything that is glorious is covered are we together imagine if your heart was on your head do you know what your enemies would have done with it are we together just imagine that your heart was on your head where someone can hold it out of anger and squeeze it and kill you so god decided to hide it and covered it with ribs because of the vitality someone can slap your face and you feel bad and it doesn't kill you but someone holds your heart squeezes it and does whatever you will die and so in his wisdom because of the excellency of that organ he hid it imagine if women get pregnant on their head think what the enemies will do with acid on those babies growing are we together now and so God designed a system to make sure that the baby is hidden and safe while growing only revealed when the time is right so the, the wisdom, the, the ideas about life help us to understand the principles of God. That everything that is glorious is veiled. If someone were to give you something and you check, you don't see the coverings around it, you will return it back. In fact, there are products that they say if you find out at the point of purchase that it is open, return it back. God is a God of the secret place. Psalm 91 that's our text for tonight from verse 1 and 2 psalm 91 from verse 1 and 2 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high the first information that is revealed in this scripture is that it is possible to dwell remember the secret place is not the house of god are we together you can come to the house of God and fellowship. You can be planted in terms of your consistency. But here the Bible is talking about something. Remember, he never said them. Them. It's not a corporate thing at all. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The Bible says shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust the secret place is real 
the secret place is not necessarily a physical location although although a possibility exists that a man can create a location and dedicate it to be a meeting point with him and God but the, the idea of secret place does not necessarily mean a physical location the secret place is a spiritual state it's a posture that a man can take that allows him to access where God is very powerful the Bible says whoever is in that secret place of the most high it says he shall dwell under the shadow that means God is there if it is the secret place you will find God there listen if it is the secret place you will find only God there there may be other beings around but when it comes to the secret place there are many things that happen upon Mount Zion, the house of God. Innumerable company of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect. But in the secret place is an affair between you and God. Not you and a prophet. Not you and an apostle. Not you and members. No. Not you and your wife. Not you and your husband. You and God. This is an art that our generation of people as serious as we are we are losing it we have prayer meetings a lot of corporate gatherings and as wonderful as they are many people don't know God in spite of their prayer and fasting because there are dimensions of God that have to be uniquely revealed to you when you are alone with him there are things God will never tell you when you are in a corporate place it's true When you are alone, listen, the Bible talks about Jacob being alone. He was about to see his brother Esau and he was afraid not knowing what will happen. So he divided his possessions. The Bible said he sent his wives. He sent everybody. Say when he was alone, then a man came. He created an atmosphere that became a secret place. And a man came and he wrestled with that man. He said, leave me for the day breaker. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and you have prevailed. And he touched his thigh, blessed him. And the Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel, meaning the face of God. Because I have seen God face to face and my life has been spared. If all of you is seen by everybody, you will not be mighty in these end times. There are dimensions of your life and dealing with God that is not even for public consumption. There are things God tells you that is not for preaching. They are his customized dealings that should serve as the foundations for your spiritual stability. Not everything you receive from the secret place is shareable. There are things you receive from the secret place. If you share it, you will lead people into error. Because it was a unique communication that was peculiar to your level of alignment. It is not healthy to share those things. There are instructions that if God gives you and you obey, if another person obeys that instruction, it becomes the reason why he falls. Are we blessed? The secret place. The place of the dealing of God with men. Men are not made just in church alone. Men are made in the secret. And when I talk of men, I'm not just talking of men in ministry, like pastoral ministry. Men are made in the secret place. So the secret place is real. It is a location spiritually that can also be reflected by a physical location. Remember, I've taught it in this house, the law of consistency. Come, Mike. If the law of consistency is, is the scripture that the Bible says, whosoever you serve, the slave of that person you will become thereof. It's just paraphrasing. That means that if um, I go to pray, you will be surprised that I can struggle with prayer because I'm really doing it in the flesh. 
but it's not to be discouraged i will go back again and do it i will go back again the fourth fifth sixth time as i keep repeating that activity i am whatever spirit on earth is responsible for prayer which of course is the holy ghost but the dimension of his operation that supplies grace and the staying power in prayer is being attracted through my consistency you see that a day will come i will go for prayer and live back in the power of that spirit from that day you can't stop praying again are we together it's true even in your sleep you will be praying and wake up because they, you have become a slave to the influence of that spirit same thing with giving give you can frown and carry your seed and god gives you an instruction and you are angry and then because the grace for it has not been given but you continue in obedience your consistency is drawing to your life that grace is called the power to lay it down the grace that conquers greed a day will come when that grace overwhelms you at that point there is nothing you cannot give god including your life and like jesus you will say i have the power to lay it down there is nothing god can give you at that point he can give you everything because he knows you will release it so you can see two people and one can easily give he can carry his whole salary he can carry his life savings and another person will give 10 naira and come back and say are you aware that i gave 10 naira today See, I used to give five naira before. I, even me, I'm impressed with myself. That person is operating just in the flesh. Of course, God is, is a faithful and merciful God. But when people are operating by the Spirit, how you know is that they are under the influence of that Spirit. It's not something mechanical again. When the Spirit of Revelation comes upon you, whether you are studying the bible before you preach or not it's only you that will know nobody walking with you will know that this guy has not read the bible for one month it's only you and god you will never use the 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 limitation of revelation because the spirit of revelation through your consistency of scripture has come upon you and rested upon you are we together and because that dimension of the spirit has rested upon you you will find out it is possible to close your bible for one year and yet you are teaching volumes of series it is only you and god that will know that you have not been opening your bible but you will be surprised that you are quoting scriptures you know nothing about you can open your bible on stage like this like i'm standing to preach and on stage when you are about to preach that's when your sermon comes in less than one second because the spirit of revelation is upon you you can literally get up to preach not knowing what to say and people think you have been preparing for 10 days one week for the conference and you finish that's why you see all these things are not necessarily measures of spiritual maturity because there is a grace follow me tonight oh. are we together the secret place The tragedy with many believers is that they think they will know God by reading a book many believers think they will know God just by listening to a man talk about him all these things are stimulators but the Bible says the scriptures testify of me that means the scripture should lead you to want to know a man the scriptures are a testimony you heard about koinonia for those of you coming for the first time you listen to a message and it propels something in you let me come to that place that's how it works when your experience just stops at reading the bible then you did not maximize the purpose the scripture must lead you to an encounter when i say things like this most people think i'm being arrogant but i have said it for many years that the way our generation is seeking god we will not find him that way we pride ourselves in finishing the Bible from cover to cover and we move around saying, I know God, I've read the Bible 30 times. It's valuable. I've done this and that. I'm in every prayer meeting and you see a lot of spiritually ignorant people bragging around. We believe that the knowledge of God is in the volume of spiritual activities. No, sir. No, sir. You know a man by giving that man time 
time is a component in intimacy there is nobody that knows anything without committing time to it no sir we are used to fast everything fast food fast whatever you can walk to a restaurant now and while you are talking they are frying the egg for you they just turn it flip the burgers you have we carry that same attitude god you are king i'm educated i have an msc reveal yourself just in a nutshell god in a nutshell lord in a nutshell just let me know how the, your principles work no sir that's why we are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth do you know about finances yes i know do you know about the anointing i even know there are seven dimensions of the anointing go to isaiah 11 and we we do it like we are rapping and at the end the gates of hell are said i like these people continue priding yourself and then you find out that the emptiness there is no substance of the knowledge of god that's why our convictions dwindle you watch people who claim they love god let a little challenge test them and they will they will they will cause god to his face lord i thought you would give me the job i everything was all right they even called me to congratulate me lord were you not there when i was quoting the scripture and all of a sudden the employment list comes out and it's not there and you are crying for two weeks god you must appear and answer me and god says that is all you know about me You must pay the price to know God for yourself. The, listen, this corporate knowledge of God will not stand the test of time. The days that are coming will require, the Bible says, but the people that do know their God, that do know their God, they are the ones who will be strong and will do exploits. There are things I know about God I will die believing. The rate at which believers vacillate convictions is a proof that we have not encountered God. It's amazing how someone can believe something today and walk in that conviction, write books about it, and two weeks later, he's not sure again. You can't mentor a generation like that. Unbendable conviction based on something you have seen. A man of God that is into great deliverance, um, was confronted by another man and said look you are always doing this thing he said stop misleading these people and he looked at him he said why are you talking like this he said go and find out about my educational qualification and everything I had for me to leave all of that and be doing what I'm doing you should know that it's not just that I read a book there is an encounter what I've seen is too real I'm just pitying you because very soon you will need me that's what the man told him he said you are under attack that's why you are talking my knowledge has shown me that whoever talks like you is under attack Some months ago in this nation, I'm not one who comments on things that happen on social media, but I understand there was a debate that had to do with tithing. Shame on the church. Shame on us times infinity for being so confused because a man 
who didn't have any right just got up and wrote a proposition is proof that we have not been doing it by faith is proof that it's not a derivative of a dimension of God we've had that means someone can get up today and say hey, Jimmy, loving your wife is sin and all of a sudden he looks at this woman and says I know you gave me two children walk out of my house why because a man said loving your wife is bad we become slaves to the ideas of people just because they are bold in communicating the idea does not mean they are right our generation is an arrogant generation in the height of our failure we are still bragging you need to know God to survive the pride of this generation you will meet somebody who will tell you I'm in business I don't tithe I don't give I'm a millionaire keep watching when he finishes deceiving you he will crash and repent and start tithing while you are suffering from his teaching many people today who have advocated error have repented quietly and they are doing what they once misled people into but many other people are there suffering are we blessed we need to know god for ourselves we need to know god for ourselves this generic knowledge of god <clears throat> That's why for many of us, every little thing, you are looking for someone. There's nothing wrong with someone agreeing with you. But I mean, something touches your head. Um, please, hey, Jimmy, are you awake? Benga, are you awake? Promise, are you awake? Uh, Pastor Alpha, who can I call? Where, where will you know God for yourself? Then you now text the people back and say, pray. Then they say, okay, and pray. Didn't you know? Is that a news? If you do not know God for yourself then let me tell you when God begins to expose some of us you know the privilege that God has given me to meet people sometimes I sit down and I hear them talk I can't believe a man can be this arrogant in error just because there's small money or small results around you hear people talking being sarcastic or men of God and you look at that person and you know I can look at a man and know what spiritual law you are breaking and know what consequence is waiting for you even while you are bragging ah, I insulted a man of God I did this and that and I went in peace look at the foolish man that is talking the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake the person is laughing 10 years later, you will see the man at a railway station just standing with his shoes. They say, what happened? That prophecy kept trailing him like a policeman trailing a thief. And he thought just because he was free for two, three years, the word of God will stay till it judges everything. The secret place. I'm going to share with you six things. Six dimensions that we access through the power of the secret place and I want you to be very sensitive this has helped me in my life number one the secret place is the place of brokenness brokenness write it down Isaiah 51 17 Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana, Ya Bone Naka, Bone Naka, Sujada, Sujada, Sir King Salama, Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana, Hallelujah. Sorry, give us Isaiah 55. 55. 6 to 7. Isaiah 55. It says, Seek ye the Lord. 6 to 7. While he may be found. That's a very dangerous scripture. Where will the Bible say, While he may be found? This is not talking of salvation, no. This is not born again. There are dimensions in God that require timing. 
it, it, it will take, let me tell you, a man who begins to seek God at 80 years, you will find God, but there are dimensions. The remaining lifetime you have will not afford you to grow and transit and metamorphose spiritually to access certain dimensions of God. He says, seek him early while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seven. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to God for he will abundantly pardon brokenness let me tell you this brokenness um, is not necessarily for sinners pride has almost killed men of God in our generation this holier than thou mentality whenever i talk about brokenness like this there are people who just say it doesn't let's get to power part listen brokenness is a state of the heart that declares your consistent dependence on god the bible says a broken and a contrite spirit god will not despise do you know why many of us although we feel qualified we never find god because we believe that standing in our self-righteousness based on what we believe we have and know god should anoint me brokenness brokenness show me a man that can be broken towards god i show you a man who the devil will never have access to him look at david moses was a man who walked with God very faithfully. The Bible says he was the meekest man on earth. Yet, Moses could not enter the promised land. Do you know that? Just because God told him to speak to the rock and out of anger that was justified, he took a staff and hit the rock. God said, that's it, you are not going. He joined all the other people who could not make the promised land. But here is David. Search me, O God. Let me tell you the posture of those that God will use in this generation. Search me, O oh God, and try my heart. It says, if there is any wicked way in me, you don't have to manifest it yet. It can be there, waiting until you have an estate. Nobody knows that one day you can insult a woman the age of your mother. You are not yet rich. So you will think that just because I'm an obedient young man, who would have known that David one day will kill Uriah and sleep with Bathsheba? Put a man's death sentence and say, go and die. A nice shepherd boy please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord i open my heart search it brokenness is a language that our generation hates but let me tell you it is the secret the number one proof that you are a man of the secret place is that consistently it is not sin that destroys men it is the pride of an unbroken heart before god it is not weakness and limitation that destroys men. It is the pride of an unbroken heart. Nebuchadnezzar was brought to his knees until he was broken. Pharaoh was brought to his knees until he was broken. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm not ashamed that whatever you find in my heart, but I come to you just as I am. Let there be a brokenness. Sir King Aljana, ya bole na kau, sujada ne na kau, Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana, ya bole na kau, sujada ne. Psalm 139 verse 23 Brokenness One big key in my life Show me 
see a man that is broken and contrite before God I show you a man whose rising cannot be stopped by any cause any gate whatever it is he says search me oh God and know my heart like a man knows his wife know my heart he said try me and know my thoughts 24 he said and see if there be any wicked way and lead me to the way everlasting that's a man before God that's that's the posture that can bring the presence of God attract the presence of God to a man every time we stand before God believing Lord why are you using this man there are people who see certain of our orthodox pastors and they stand as young people full of themselves and say this this reverend this man he doesn't even speak english well why is god using him why is the man rising whereas i am here i'm a fasting giant i have this knowledge i have that i have this and yet the ministry does not grow do you know why because that man is not sound in the word and he knows it so he goes to god and say lord if you depend on my teaching these members will not grow i come to you with my limited revelation can your grace speak for me and god says the little prayer you pray for the members i will amplify it because it's coming from a broken heart let me tell you pride kills when you see people arrogant for a long time they have left the secret place I can know whether you are one who is of the secret place by the consistency of self-glorification and pride if up to one month in your life passes without you seeing a need to spend time with God alone it's a sign your life is under attack hear me if you're a man of God here listen twice don't be carried away by some of this little accolades in ministry oh they invited me here i went to this country a senator met with me he said you are the greatest man of god in the world while they are saying that keep your ears to the throne lord what are you saying in the midst of that club god can say finish that meeting and let's meet where we usually meet you will enter there and god will never talk to you about a senator god will say i'm already seeing there is I, I want to bless you with 100 million but there's, there's something I'm seeing that 100 million would destroy you and say God me I just a senator I would have prophesied to God say keep quiet I am God brokenness many of you stopped growing spiritually for a long time you didn't backslide but you didn't grow either because you are doing a lot of corporate things retreat now is, is a language many people don't even know what a retreat is they think retreat is fasting so they just close their door and fast and answer calls all through from morning till night gone are the days when people lock themselves and say sorry you are not going to see me for the next two days please hear me god is speaking to us if you don't practice retreats you will not survive the darkness of today it's true no matter who you are retreats retreat is not when you gas out spiritually and you see that kai no grace is working in your life no you must find time i'm busy i'm busy is a trap of the devil no if police arrest you now you are not too busy to attend to the people if an ambrober detains you somewhere you will say ambrober i'm busy come the day i'm free the power of brokenness have you come to a position where the secret place has broken you? Read you off your pride and everything. You know there is no brokenness by how we speak. Uh, the other day, someone just called me and is that I don't want to talk too much, but ah, at my level now, you know, then we now wrap it up with a religious all glory to God. It's a lie. It's a lie. All glory to God first comes from the heart before the mouth. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us now? Some of us need to find time just by this message. God is telling you, I love you, but you have, you have worshipped me corporately. But that fellowship we used to have, something is wrong. 
return to it oh return to it return to it that fellowship is not there again even when you didn't have money for hotel you were having time for god now that you can pay for any hotel or any place to stay with god you are no longer spending time we only run to god when there's trouble then we just run and say god have come again is it not you you are god i'm a man but let's not no lord i come to you i stand before you and i know that it is by your mercy and by your grace lord i thank you david a man after not god's money you can be after god's money you can be after god's anointing you can be after god's fame but a man after god's heart please i like us to write it if you are writing i return to the place of brokenness genuine brokenness it will show in our conversations when we are broken you always acknowledge that i am what i am by the grace of god there are arrogant statements especially from we men of god that are testaments of our absenting ourselves from the secret place number two please take it down for me the secret place is the place where we find the mercy of god ah. in recent times i have caught a revelation of god's mercy in a way and a manner i wish i knew this 10 15 years ago not that i don't know about the mercy of god but the idea many people have about the mercy of god is the reason why they never at all access his mercy do you know that the mercy of god is one of the major keys that many people are looking for in this life not even favor mercy first our idea about mercy is that mercy is for sinners so we pride ourselves that i'm not a sinner i don't need mercy lord what i need is revelation <clears throat> the place of mercy psalm 86 verse 5 we'll read a few scriptures quickly psalm 86 verse 5 we find mercy in the secret place for thou O lord art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy to who not to all believers please help me plenteous in mercy unto them that sin unto them that fast unto them that call upon you if you call upon him he knows you are calling upon his mercy the mercy of god the mercy of god you call upon the mercy of god and see him move beyond your faith level call upon the mercy of god and see him move beyond everything in your life when you invoke the mercy of god he moves because of his his son jesus christ it has nothing to do with you again it has everything to do up there are people who are prosperous even though there's still a cause in their life that cause has not been broken but they are still prosperous because their language all the way is messy as the arrows that fly by day is coming they have no knowledge of spiritual intelligence but mercy please help that lady the mercy of god oh, oh, oh. Oh 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 Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. Lamentations 3 and 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not what? 
consumed consumed because his compassions fail not that means even when I didn't know the spiritual laws that would have kept me I still saw results that were not accounted to my knowledge spiritually and later now that I know that this is the law responsible for this result I'm wondering why I was getting the result anyway because by the time I started getting the result I was not yet obeying that spiritual law I didn't understand the mystery of exemption I didn't understand the mystery of praise yet the rewards of exemption were following me and the Bible tells me the secret that it is because in your ignorance you were able to provoke the mercy of God if God were to wait for us to obey every single spiritual law allocated for our victory some of us would taste victory when we are 97 years because our rate of assimilation compared to our need for the result is very low so he introduces his mercy I know you are you are you based on the way I deal with people if you if you don't tithe consistently but something has happened in your life and i noticed for four months you have not been tithing ordinarily based on the terms of justice you should not receive this reward coming but you were wise enough immediately you called my mercy he overrides the four months not tithing and then he doesn't justify you but he gives you this to show that i am god he said because his compassion failed do you know what his compassion is? The ability to be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He is aware that you are a man. Ha! So, when God gives Sam an instruction and says, Sam, remove your suit and sew it. And then for some reason, Sam is struggling. Maybe because when he grew up, he was taking care of all his family members and the little time now he's been able to do something for himself god is now saying to show god knows it's not easy because he has gone through pains and so when he disobeys god god doesn't say you disobey me i will judge you compassion makes him to examine the condition and say no if i were sam what would i have done no i i shift beyond I, I'm not justifying this, but Sam, I have been touched with the feelings of your limitation. I still qualify you. This is God. Oh, oh, oh. I started experiencing in my life before I ever understood the spiritual principles that control that result not many men of God will tell you what I'm telling you most people will make it look like all their result is a direct reflection of their total obedience is a lie no how many of you men of God have gone to preach and you were too tired to pray you just lay down open your eyes and it was time for the vigil there are times that I'm so tired, I leave Koinonia here. And before I get home, it's past one. I have to leave five o'clock to catch the flight. I'm there, there is a delay. I'm arriving and all kinds of things. And the meeting is already on. And sometimes all I do is just lie down on my bed. And I say, Lord, I know this part of you. It is your mercy that I need in this meeting. And all of a sudden, that anointing comes again. I know that the angel of his presence is with me within that room. Not because I, I honestly took out the time to pray i will be lying to tell you i prayed eight nine hours for every sermon for the results you get it's not true there are times that all i did it was in the plane i was sleeping i didn't even know until we landed and got up dragged myself like that went to dress and there i'm going in the meeting and everybody has been fasting for two weeks apostle is coming and you who is preaching you have not fasted you are tired is you stagger yourself on stage but suddenly I know what this thing is, oh. 
sujanane na kau Sarking salama Sarking aljana Yabone na kau Sujanane na kau Sarking salama Sarking aljana Psalm 25, verse 6 to 7. While I was studying this, I stumbled across that scripture and it blessed me in no small way. He said, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Next verse. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. He said, no, my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Listen, there are many of us that if you pray this prayer, many parents today are suffering the consequences of the sins of their youth. They did something when they were young and it followed them forever, forever. And their children's children, they are not exactly under a curse. It's just the rod of judgment that is upon them. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. There are people here before you knew God. Before you knew anything about God. You even came from an abused family. So there was no hope of knowing anything about God. You almost shredded your life into pieces. It was even when you came to university, you got born again. But there is a backload of a lot of spiritual laws that have been intertwined together. Remember not oh god the sins of my youth nor my now listen there is a difference between sin and transgression let's assume you lived a very nice life what of transgression violations of ordinances whether through ignorance or disobedience lord remember not that in 1995 i should be tightened I was criticizing men of God in 20 in 2000 I should be filled with the Holy Spirit and I said God forbid I blasphemed against the Holy Spirit remember not my transgression he said according to thy mercy not according to thy wisdom according to thy mercy remember thou me for thy goodness sake these are mysteries in the Bible that's why some people will keep getting angry with a lot of people you will see a woman the woman is not so wise she's not so intelligent she's not so learned she has been a widow since the children were five years but you see help coming from everywhere mama what is the secret she'll say all i know is one song one song of mercy that i sing all the time and then another arrogant person, I went to Yale, I went to this, I went to that. In fact, don't worry, I know that they will elect me. It's just that I'm being patient until this guy becomes president. The guy becomes president for eight years and goes, you are nothing for you. If you can learn to provoke God's mercy, when blind Bartimeo, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time, he didn't say, Jesus, I am obedient to, I've been listening to your message. Jesus would have said, they're not obedient enough. You only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete, not around. He said, thou son of David, have mercy. Hold on. Was Jesus the son of David? No. The son of David was Solomon. So you will say you are calling Solomon. Oh, don't call me. Solomon will come and help you. But he knew something. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And then he turned. He said, what do I do? He said that I will receive my sight. The mercy of God. Many of us come from families whose parents were wicked to others. And if God is to, no matter how innocent you are, the wickedness that some of our loved ones, some of our loved ones had jobs, they stop young people from rising. They are carrying on their head the woes and the pain of bleeding people. Forget that they repented later on. It will take the mercy of God to advocate for them. Oh, Hallelujah. 
when Jesus appeared to me I will be lying if I was I, I always seek the Lord but at that time I was not on any special fasting program I was not on any special word program I, I'm not sure I was even studying my Bible just lying down quietly and then he came what brought him mercy people ask me today I want to see Jesus I tell them I don't know how I don't know how to help you see Jesus I know how to help you love God but to see Jesus the equation even me I don't understand the food I just know some variables nobody knows all the equation what do you add plus what equal to seeing Jesus you add it and see whether he will visit you this night because you can sit down here crying for an encounter and Jesus will leave you and go under the bridge in Kaduna and wait for someone by 1 a.m. who is busy insulting my stupid men of God there comes Jesus he says I am Jesus and you are saying with oh, I'm, I'm here fasting Jesus this is not fair I thought you say you reward those who diligently seek you because in the midst of that his ranting compassion is interpreting what he's saying he's not really insulting God he's saying I'm a confused young man looking for help God hears the voice of your mouth but he hears the voice of your heart that's why you can be saying stupid things and God is answering something else because while your mouth is saying something your heart is saying something years ago I was speaking to one guy who I don't know there's the, the guy smokes all kinds of things and I sat down I was remember him remember that gentleman Jimmy very funny guy he was under I think he was under the bridge in Kwangila Kwangila bridge this guy came to be part of us and within less than two weeks he started entering dimensions of encounter with Jesus there's somebody that was a I mean you look at his life as if there is nothing but in the midst of that what his heart was saying is Lord I need you whereas you physically your mouth is saying Lord I need you but your heart is saying Lord I'm fine by myself God does not just listen to your mouth your heart too has a voice that's why he said try my heart oh Lord give me money and your heart is saying Lord I'm on a revenge mission I need to prove to people I'm not a failure and God says your heart and your mouth is conflicting but someone else can say I will never tight and what the heart is saying is Lord I'm frustrated if this thing is real reveal to me number three the secret place is the place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort oh how you need this in this troubled world let me give you an advance notice everyone you know has the potential of disappointing you everyone i think it's a revelation you need to note today everyone born by a woman born again or not has the potential to disappoint you disappoint you in business disappoint you in ministry disappoint you in marriage disappoint you in every regard when people say a pastor disappointed me i thought he would make me a deacon i've been there for him he didn't make me a deacon i i thought i thought i'm not the last but what are you saying that's a man for you but there is a place that god provided where the weary can find rest and comfort you are a man of god listen to this i was sharing with a dear friend today on phone in the afternoon and he was so weary and tired spiritually and i was a distant friend somewhere and i was just advising him i say you see this work that we do ba we look busy but our lives are very lonely you need to know how to find comfort in god otherwise if you can't find comfort in God you will start finding comfort in movies you will start finding comfort somewhere you will now I'm not saying it's wrong one day you go to football viewing center where someone that's behind you will go and kill you there have you learned to find rest and comfort in God 
that's why some of us get into the mistake because of the obsession to share your problem with someone the pain overwhelms you you don't choose who whoever is there for you emotionally at that time you run your mouth and tell people intricate details about your life about your family when you are done with the gist you don't know what to do with yourself again because you have messed up your entire life they used to respect your father and your mother until one day you open your mouth and told the people wrongly do you know that i'm not the first child of my father i i it's a long story uh my my father pregnanted one zimbabwean woman 10 years before i came and the person you are telling is not even matured spiritually it's just that your heart was looking for the secret place and because you didn't have it you had to search for someone be careful this is particularly for ladies because ladies you are designed to be expressive you always want to be heard be careful you would destroy a lot of good things in your life there are people who sat down in restaurants talking about the contract that their husbands got and the person sitting at the other side of the table was an arm robber the guy had finished eating but he refused to stand up and go because she was sharing him god is faithful oh sorry i'm meeting you for the first time am i talking too much and then instead of the friend to say yes they say no 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 i'm okay then you continue talking God is faithful as we, I, we are. He even said he's buying a jeep for me. As I'm talking to you now, there's twenty thousand dollars on our bed. Eh? The way the bed is, it's a six by eight, seven, and under you know that kind of bed. While you are talking, the armor robber is nodding. I say, in fact, I didn't even tell you where we live. Do you know that we moved recently? You know that that one white house, and in the night, that man is just there and comes with accuracy and looks for you and say, Remember, you were describing your house for me lie down and he shoots and kills everybody don't allow your mouth destroy your destiny are we together there are men of god who carried their church problems out of pressure and took it to politicians instead of taking it to god sir just to let you know forget all this one that we laugh on tv the truth is that the bills that are on our head we need 200 million by friday and the senator said oh really ah uh -uh. um, and you always look sharp like this <laughs> that's how we do it is your industry and all of a sudden one day you go somewhere and say all of you lift up your hands and the senator is in a beer parlor watching you as they look at these idiots the other day i was with this man and he was begging me for 200 million because only god should have heard that you left him in search for what only his secret place can give you are we learning something tonight hmm. the secret place is a place of rest and comfort psalm 27 please media help us first psalm 27 from verse 13 to 14 we'll read four serious scripture psalm 27 verse 13 to 14 he said i had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. No matter who you are in life, because of disappointed expectations, because of our goals and our dreams not happening when and how we want it to be there are times that you can be weary as a man of god you've trust god for increase in membership you are pouring your heart do you know one of the most heartbreaking thing for any man of god is to truly pour your heart to members and people and not see them growing at the rate that matches your sacrifice except you are not an honest man of god it will pain you sometimes when i get text messages from people i truly tears fill my eyes i just start because it's painful the time it takes to prepare just one sermon you see that and then all of a sudden very unwise decisions that come from those things and your heart just bleeds are we together at that time you will be tempted to call a friend call somebody or whatever confident now you must learn to wait on the lord lord i bring before you these church bills 
Lord, I love you, but the bills in my family are almost killing me. The bills in my church are almost killing me. Lord, I come to you because nobody can understand me. Nobody understands me. They all think I'm a wicked woman. But Lord, you know my heart. I come to you. And the Lord says, find rest. This is where you can be understood. It is powerful to be understood. Unfortunately, life does not give you that kind of opportunity with men. It's difficult for men to understand you. But there is one, there is a place, brothers and sisters, that you can go where you know God understands you. Hallelujah. Wait thou upon the Lord. Psalms 91 and verse 4 to 5. Then we look at 62 and verse 1 to 5. If God, is God speaking to you tonight? Psalm 91 and verse 4. He said, he shall cover thee. Look at this. Come. He gives you a picture of a hen or an eagle. Is that true? You know how eagles protect their young ones. They spread their feather and cover them while they are under. They just cover them. In other words, let, let me see let me see the the animal let me see the 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 predator in the wilderness that will come near you i know you are fragile in yourself but i cover you he said he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust then his truth shall be your shield and buckler have you experienced that dimension of god that people can be insulting you many of us have not risen to places you know for some of us who god has granted grace in ministry small it's painful to pour your heart there are times that you can do everything you are doing and all of a sudden someone may be listening to a colonial message and say all these pastors all they are looking for is your money i don't trust any pastor in nigeria they are all stupid people they all use your money it's all church money you see all of them dressing is all your money they are using when you hear that kind of thing no matter how you are sometimes as a human being it can touch your heart because you know you are sincere but there's no one to explain to and god doesn't even allow you to explain anything to anybody at such times his presence and he says my son i'm the only person on earth you owe explanation and if i've credited you it doesn't matter who and what they think comfort and rest someone looked at me and said apostle how do you get motivated you are always happy i said you think so if i if what is on my head comes upon you you will collapse physically immediately not after a few weeks immediately 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 success is a burden it's a burden you should pray to be prepared before you pray it comes to you are we together yes success I think it was last year i went to buy suya in the night i was just playing a song and someone just knocked the door of my vehicle i just went down and then i i looked at the lady and she was jumping she said, ah, apostle you buy suya i mean that's my life what 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 sort of embarrassment is that that that's the burden of being successful what what is what is wrong with suya is suya tobacco just that i stroll in the night to just make myself happy you see when you become great everything about your life is everybody's business and it can be a burden it can be a burden sometimes people will call you in the night and you say you are sleeping you say i'm surprised you are sleeping look at that kind of stupid text you see that and it can make you feel guilty sometimes you would think it will enter you but sometimes you feel guilty because truly that time you may have planned to pray it's just that sleep took over you the people make you feel bad and you stand up saying because of this i must go for three days dry to prove there's, there's nothing to prove my brother go to the secret place and find rest and find comfort many of us don't know how to find rest in god 
we don't know how to find comfort in God that's why we find comfort in things that's why we find comfort in people you find comfort in a friend that disappoints you you move to another one that disappoints you then you go to a pastor that disappoints you then you go to a film that disappoints you then you go to a drink that disappoints you then you go to a club that disappoints you then you say I hate life like Solomon you now say vanity upon vanity all is I have learned to find comfort in his presence I remember one time when the crowds were increasing here I was concerned about the rain and I said Lord what do we do what do we do there are several people coming you know several people and they will keep coming what do we do that time sometimes because the venue may not be available uh, the alternatives we used to use then were very inconveniencing I had to go to God look at Moses do you know what happens when you are a leader people expect you to have answer to everything even what they don't have answer for they are very okay with themselves they pity and excuse themselves but they look at you and say you should have an answer for this they looked at moses and said moses you don't know also if you don't find a way of parting this red sea we are taking it gently now we will butcher you here make swords from the gold we took from egypt and kill you here and and put your monument and moses said just take it easy wise man he ran to the presence of god lord what do i do i need i need comfort these people are wearing me and he says stand still he said take your rod go and tell the people to move forward learn to draw strength in his presence learn to retreat when people look at you and do all kinds of things you have neighbors that are nagging and troublesome you have people in your office who are always misunderstanding what you are doing. You have people who will bribe and cheat and live their lives anyhow. And you have made up your mind that there's no bribing, there's no cheating. If it's 10 naira for the organization, I'm returning it. And they look at you and say, holy, holy, stupid person. Are we all not chopping somehow in Nigeria? Even that company said, is it not with bribe? They started this company. And they try to make you feel guilty. At that point, my soul went down upon the Lord wait thou upon the lord psalm 62 verse 1 to 5 quickly if we're unable to finish we'll continue next week psalm some of you this message you don't need it now just keep rising the time will come you will need this message daily you will search for this message and sit down and weep while you hear right now you are not sowing any seed but people are giving you their harvest so you think it's your faith that is working a time will come you will be exposed to the high sun the reality of working these kingdom principles then it will down on you you know sometimes you go for meetings and when a man of god is preaching you see pastors crying standing up and you'll be wondering why are they like this because they they are closest to that reality when they say bills that is not captured in your mind because someone else is awake while you are sleeping. The time will come when you will be awake where you should be awake. And that's when you will find out that someone can have a bed but not have sleep. The situations in your life will wake you up. Say, are you joking? You want to sleep when we are here? Verse 1 to 5. Truly, my soul waited upon God. He said, from him cometh my salvation. Next verse to 5. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Ah, I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 3. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Talking to enemies now. Ye shall be slain all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering fence. For they only consult to cast him down from his excellency. It says they delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. This is a picture of the tragedy of greatness. That when people become great, this is what happens to them. Men can say, well done, you are a man of God. But in their heart, they say, we pray that one day you will have an accident to prove that this faith is nothing. The Bible says to bring him down from his excellency. Then it says, my soul, wait thou only upon God. He said, for my expectation is from him. Are you blessed tonight? You must learn to wait on him for comfort instead of running around and harassing people listen every time situations overwhelm you keep quiet 
go to the secret place play a song like this or play worship i think media worship, worship team you people should do these kinds of things you just have 30 minutes of strong instrumentation like this for people to soak in because there are times you can't sing i wish i can tell you is every time you can dance dance where is the energy from i there's a lady she may be in koinonia here they are burying her mother on um today's sunday i think on tuesday or wednesday this lady's mother died like 10 days ago she calls me almost 10 times every day crying and say apostle i believe my mother can come back to life that my mother said she will live long my mother was a god-fearing woman you know how difficult it is for a man of god especially when you walk in the anointing to respond to people like that and after praying and fasting when they came to carry the mother's body i think from shika or so to travel with her she kept crying and telling them that they, they should leave her her mother will come no i say small girl we know you are this that lady can get into prostitution immediately because of anger and say god failed me and then someone will run his big mouth and say something at that point what that lady needs is the secret place there is no amount of counseling you bring that will touch that lady are we together it's true What happens when a man of God and his wife is unable to have a child? What happens when a man of God who is anointed gets married and then they find out he's impotent? What happens when a man of God's family is in shambles? He labors and gives birth to children. He's pouring his heart to bless the world and all the children, daughters getting pregnant, sons are into drugs. It's difficult for that man to stand and preach because he has to continue to be a preacher of righteousness but someone says don't bless us with this your faith thing if you know god why is it that your daughter why is it that your son has not been able to do anything brothers and sisters there are times that life can push you that even the strongest of us will need to lean to something other than you at that point find rest oh my soul find rest find rest in his presence it's true there are times that the leaders send me text messages sir we need to make a decision now this is what we need to do this is what we have to do this is what we have to do sometimes i think it was in the school of ministry or so um a few days or last week i was told that while lectures was going on someone's bike was stolen or so very funny incidents now when you hear such kinds of things as a man of god it can touch you have you learned to rest in god i have learned to draw strength in his presence we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you number four the secret place is a place of revival and restoration write it down the secret place is a place of revival and restoration psalm 23 from verse 2 and 3 please restoration of fire restoration of hunger restoration of love for god restoration of values restoration of your physical energy psalm 23 from verse 2 he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 he restores my soul he restores my soul he restores my soul there are times you need restoration you need restoration of fire you need restoration of grace psalm 143 verse 11 psalm 143 verse 11 a place of revival quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness sake bring my soul out of trouble 
the prayers that great men pray quicken my soul lord revive me revive me my the situations in my life i can feel life going out of me physically revive me revive me oh god revive me i need a reviver lord the ministry burden is overwhelming me i can't pray again i can't fast again there is a conference coming and lord the finances is not there the energy is not there just when i want to prepare my son is causing trouble just when i want to love god one of the sons that i've so labored and raised is now disappointed revive me lord i feel life going out of me you need revival revive my fire lord i used to be a prayer warrior i used to pray for two hours three hours all of a sudden as soon as i graduated now it's three years after graduation lord i'm surprised no visions again no fire no nothing i'm surprised i misquote scriptures i cannot even Appa! no i used to wake up 2 a.m every day 12 o'clock every day now in two weeks I've not even called on your name revive me a secret place it's a place where men cry they come to him and say lord revive me revive me revelation chapter 2 4 to 5 revelation chapter 2 this was the lord speaking to the seven churches he said nevertheless I have somewhat against you. What do I have against you? He said, because thou hast left thy first love. This is a word from the Lord to many of us here. Not thou hast stopped loving me. Thou hast left your first love. I like many of us to just be sensitive to what the Spirit is doing. I already sense the anointing. But there are many of us, the way you started with God is not the way you are going now it's impossible for a whole day that you will not open your bible you will not read but right now you don't even know where the bible is that's the truth you love god you are born again but the fire has gone you may even be a preacher there's no week that you will not fast at least one day but right now six months gluttony has eaten up your fire quench the fire on the coals that the Lord would need to pick those tongues of fire again from the throne and touch your heart and touch your hand and touch your lips return to your first love return to your first love return to your first love God is speaking to us return to your first fire return to your first appetite for spiritual things you used to buy at least a book every month right now it's more than two years the only books you have are the ones that are left there you are not interested again you have all kinds of devotionals you have all kinds of things there are many believers that need to return to their first love Is God speaking to us tonight? Return to your first love. And you return by going back to the secret place. Do you know sometimes what God does for me is that I can sit down like this quietly and he begins to play before me the visions of my yesterday, yesteryears. All of a sudden I see myself in the night when I used to pray. I see myself studying. I see those things and they bring a fresh energy fresh energy to me many of us have lost visions no vision you dream you sleep for eight hours you don't see anything tied to your destiny something is wrong yahweh yahweh hey, hey. help me sing yahweh yahweh Yahweh, 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 Yahwe
Number five, the secret place is a place of illumination. It's where the secrets of destiny is revealed to men. The secret place is where you find the secret of your destiny. You will never find it in a book. You may read it in a book, but the secret place is where the blueprint, the mysteries of your destiny are unveiled to you. Yahweh. Yahweh Listen It was in the secret place God gave me this formula that the string must always be played while I teach. He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. I didn't get it from a book. It was in the secret place many years ago. He said, your anointing is tied to the atmosphere of worship. That every time the mystery is prayed, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you. The secret place. Many of you are in one position in destiny. There is no, you don't know what else to do. Because the secret place is where the blueprint, the strategy for your destiny is revealed. Listen. That it worked for brother A does not mean it will work for you. You must go to the secret place. Lord, what is my destiny about? Open this thing. What is the key to my anointing? I know I'm anointed, but how do I open it? Why do I stand in a meeting and not see your power flow? Sometimes it happens. I'm not sure. I try to copy this man of God. I try to do this. What is the key? What is the key? What is the key? How do I know this anointing is in a place? How do I know what you want? Daniel chapter 2. We are reading from verse 14 to 22. Then we'll jump to verse 28. A king sleeps in the night and has a strange dream. And the king is angry. If no one can tell me the dream and the interpretation, I will kill everybody. And here comes Daniel. Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. People were about to die because there was no strategy. Next verse. 16 we are reading to 22 then daniel went in listen and desired of the king that he would give him what time it's not that it cannot be found give me time it looks like my life is not making progress it's like there is no way out i don't conclude on me yet give me somebody prophesied to someone say give me time it looks like i'm confused I've been going around in circles and nothing is happening. Give me. It looks like God called me, but the anointing is not yet speaking. He said, give me time. Something is about to be revealed in the altar of fellowship that will bring fire on my life. I see it in dreams, but it doesn't happen in my meetings. I've seen prosperity, but what is the secret? He says that he would give him time and that he would show Guaranteed, if you give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure, give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me barren, give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure, my father called me a failure, give me time, I will prove you wrong. Listen, don't let no arrogant person look at your life today and conclude on you. Anytime anybody talks nonsense, don't argue give me time i said i was called into the ministry of wealth and abundance and he said with this 200 naira shoe say don't worry just give me time something will be shown me in the secret place i will do business with god in the secret place that will shut people down let me tell you this for those who have been here in this ministry for a long time i said this thing many years ago you see that i said this thing many years ago that's why the name started eternity network international 
right from when from a, a cave somewhere with a bag because I saw it I knew that a time will come it will be a privilege for kings and presidents to hold your hand give me time it doesn't look like it give me time between now and then a mystery will be revealed brothers and sisters when you see a man rising by a technology you don't understand he used time to buy mysteries in the spirit time is currency we can use it and do business with God and receive the mysteries of our destiny in exchange 17 then Daniel went to where he went to his house just like everyone went to their own house and made the king the thing known to Ananiah and so on and so forth 18 that they would desire what mercies of the God of heaven you now see our mystery again concerning what is a secret wealth is a secret Lord why is this thing not working in our family it's a secret this anointing as open as you see there is more to it than what your eyes see there are secrets there are secrets to life is the one you carry that will help you command life there are secrets to favor it says and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men in babylon 19 hallelujah 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 then the secret was revealed to joshua selman in a night vision it says and daniel blessed the god of heaven listen there are people here what you are doing is true you are called but you will not get there the way you are approaching it your call is genuine but there is no secret nothing has been given to you god gave me the secret of not the general church growth the church growth for koinonia it's a secret it's a secret it's not charms that is bringing people it's a secret it's a mystery we trade mysteries in the kingdom you will look at it like this and not see where the equation adds up but you ask the devil find out the devil that will stop people from coming it's a mystery whatever mystery brings you somewhere keeps you there it's a mystery then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision Daniel blessed the God of heaven we are reading to 22 then Daniel answered and said listen blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his and he changed the times and the seasons he removed kings and set up kings he gave wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them who know understanding 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what it is in darkness and the light dwelleth with him 28 verse 28 i thank thee and praise thee O god of my fathers who has given me wisdom and might and has made known to me now what we desired of thee for thou hast now made unto us the king's matter a matter that does not concern you but by the mystery of the secret place god gives you something great men are fathers of faith in this nation they will tell you they found secrets when they started people said don't mind them it's five years now they are going as if the devil doesn't exist i've passed redemption camp a number of times and i am amazed at how people leave lagos around and come to this forest i've been to canaan land otter i've been to almost almost all the prayer grounds from mfm to to living faith to to redeemed to four square is amazing almost all of them can be holding programs concurrently simultaneously and it's all packed full to the outside same mysteries listen when you hold the mysteries of the kingdom i pity whoever just thinks you are joking it's not pride you will play life like a chess but there is a god in heaven that revealed what please i want to comfort you concerning your business concerning your career there is a god oh, in heaven 
and the bible says he has the ability to reveal secrets my life is full of this kind of experiences where god comes to me and says this is it i give you a blueprint i give you a secret and make known unto the king nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the visions of thy head are these and he began to tell him revelation let's take one last verse and we're done for today jesus psalm 25 verse 4 to 5 psalm 25 verse 4 to 5 and then we'll pray very touching scripture let's read it one to read four to five he says show me thy ways O lord teach me thy paths next verse lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the god of my salvation because i'm aware you can do this what do i do on thee do i wait how long say retreat all day not part of the day all day because i want you to teach me something i want you to guide me so i wait all day not half day there are retreats that are half day two hours a proper full retreat is a complete day from the rising of the sun to the going down you are in his presence lord i stay i know you will come six hours he has not come you are still worshiping sitting like a madman eight hours you've not had anything it's just general scriptures of comfort i will lead you where you will go you just be patient nine hours he's still there and all of a sudden late into the night you are sitting like a madman and say what am i doing here then he comes in his majesty when he comes you know he's there all of a sudden the climate changes his majesty is coming to your room he says what have you been asking me about this is for your destiny come let me show you and he takes you in the spirit of the lord opens a bible you have been reading every day but this time he's the one who opens it this is your destiny this is it this is what to do about your finances when you do this they will attack you here do this one do this these are the keys go and he leaves you get up from that vision and say where are the devils they come like before but you rise by a mystery and they say what lifted you the secrets of the lord we don't do business in this kingdom by bold face you will die like a chicken the mysteries of the kingdom listen there's there's a woman now is i'm just waiting i i trust that they would finish i think i sent you the text a miracle happened just between yesterday and today a doctor I, I don't know if it's shika here he was trained in abu someone died this morning um now we don't talk a lot about all these kinds of things they were in the surgical room with the lady operating for what i don't know and then i don't know what happened and the person just died like that he was trained in abu here but i think it's another hospital and they were all confused because the lady said according to the doctor he said they be i sent you the text and a number of people here that they begged the lady said please make sure i come alive and the lady just died like that just died and the doctor sent me a text i think it was around maybe afternoon and said this is the situation and the family members are sitting somewhere just waiting for the report and he said honestly apostle you have to help us this is a difficult situation this girl has died they check after a long time i said are you a doctor i replied him back are you a doctor he said yes i'm certified i'm not he said he was doing the surgery with um, some other senior colleagues i said Tor, what do you want now he said apostle we can't tell this family this lady has died and i said okay the anointing of the spirit just came upon me in a very strange way and then i sent a text it's still in my phone i sent a text i said in the name of jesus I called back your life I said they should take the phone and place it on the person and then the doctor foolishly just did it like that help her please immediately he placed that phone after a few minutes all of a sudden from the gates of death this girl just jumped back the text is still in my phone Yahweh Yahweh hey, hey.
going to pray. We'll stop here for tonight. Listen. What you call greatness in life is a function of these realities accessed by the power of the secret place. If the devil robs you from the reality of the secret place, he has used one blow to destroy many aspects of your life. There are many of us right now we are we are at a crossroad listen when you go to the secret place you don't come out till you come out with answers many of us go to the secret place. we are not desperate enough god does not visit casual people diligently seek him that you go back with answers and sit there and say lord do you know i read the story of buddha buddha was a young indian who was confused about life and why some things could not answer it doesn't mean i believe in him that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying buddha got angry carried notebooks and went to the secret place and said he's not coming out again until whoever is the deity of the universe explained to him the mystery of life he went there and whoever he met there and had an encounter changed his name to buddha he left there as an ordinary person he came out as buddha this is in the negative there is a way you can enter the secret place as a failure and say lord it is me and you all. i don't know what you are going to do but lord my recharge card and your god is in this room i'm not going out for your information i brought one gallon of yogurt and one gallon of juice and one bag of pure water my bathroom is there i'm not going out there must be an answer to my finances get relevant notebooks you will stay for let me give you a side effect you will stay for a long time and not hear anything but if you have the guts to insist when he tests your resolve and see that you mean it like jacob he will come he will come he will come ask occultists the freemasons one of the things they do when they are initiating people and all of that is to hit your forehead with an object that is very painful that you can faint test your resolve do you want it that bad and they test your resolve when you are taking a student to nda sometimes from the gate as you the mother just lets the student enter from the gate someone can just kick him and say oh yeah frog jump you are watching your child doing frog jump and say mommy i want to go back and then they say don't mind him and after five years that that weak chicken like guy can go to a fuel station and harass a thief and say sit down first they don't talk i say i will beat you here you see my belt i'm a military man something happened to him sometimes we pity ourselves too much to get the answers we are looking for we are not desperate enough to stay we want cheap power cheap prosperity cheap lifting cheap influence no it doesn't work that way there is a price are you ready to pray lord grace to pay the price lift your voice and begin to pray hey. There is a prize for the anointing. There is a prize for revelation. There is a prize for direction. There is a prize for greatness. The prize is the secret place. The staying power. There is a prize for a flourishing ministry. There is a prize for a thriving business. Pray, Lord, I receive grace, whatever it would take, in the name of Jesus, grace to stay. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. He that dwells in the secret place the secret place not the public place you are beautiful in all your ways you are beautiful 
in all your ways. When I find that way, it can bring glory to my life. You are beautiful in all your ways. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I kill every distraction in my life. Everything that can distract me from the secret place. Everything that can distract my pace. I receive grace. Come on, pray. Shabakato sekete leva takataria. Shabrande katos kalabarakato sekete balataria. Tena mase nani aranabash. Tena mala na banana ba. Shena mala na nias. Sere mala na na mase na na na. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, from heaven, let a fresh desire for your presence. It's not something you will do mechanically. Lord, a desire, a desire greater than my necessary food. A desire for your presence. More than a desire for, trip, for preaching. More than a desire to succeed. Plant it in my heart and let it grow. that you become my desire Shabakato sabarada bashele manadara Lekete prekete leko sodo balada 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 bal. Hallelujah. Father, open up the secrets of my destiny. There is something my eyes need to see so that my generation can see me. Open up, oh God. Let the book be open. Lift your voice and pray. Pray this prayer point with all your heart. What is the secret to your anointing upon my life? What is the secret to the spirit of revelation upon my ministry? What is the secret that you are giving me for wealth and abundance? What is the secret for influence? What is the secret for favor? Let the secrets of the kingdom be unveiled to me. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. But we are still going to pray this secret prayer. Listen, we are still going to pray it again. I had Bishop Oyedeko say this many times. That people reign in life. Not based on the secrets available. On the one God has shown them. The Lord told me something, I think it was two years ago. You know, we always teach that. The word of the Lord is powerful. Yes. But not every word of God blesses you. It is the one sent to you. Yes, sent. There were many widows in Zarephath. But a prophet was sent to one. If Elijah met another widow, it would be disobedience. Although he would give her breakthrough. Sent. Sent. The word for prosperity can come for everybody. But you must say, send me mine. Send me mine. It's a formula that will be added to you. That will work for only you. Let me tell you. There is an equation in every man's success equation that was customized for him. You first start with the general understanding. It's like occult. You will be rising with it, but you get to a level where God says, no, 
the principles have taken you let me now show you your own it's true it works for finances it works for ministry i was preaching somewhere and a man of god told me something he said he said pastor um we spend so much money on publicity is it all right if we stop because i hear you don't use i said don't stop oh the general principle is that the word must be published but how it will be published is a secret god gave me i'm not saying posters are bad that's not what i'm saying but i'm just saying it was you copy it you will run your church down sir don't do it there are things god can tell you god can tell you every time enemies rise against you fast for one day and that's all it's a secret to you it may look like a stupid secret but you will stand and see your landlord vowing that if by tomorrow I, oh you see eh, brothers and sisters when you hold these things your life almost becomes magical it's true look at jesus he had a secret they took him to a cliff all that was left is to push him and he walked through them hi There were times he parted the water but for jesus he walked on it if you were waiting for the water to part in jesus time that strategy was not it was of god but not relevant for that occasion he walked on the water and he told peter now we don't just part the water we walk on it there was something about the body of knowledge revealed to the people then that could only allow god give them miracles by passing through water but now he said you can walk on it an angel appeared to me and he told me that there shall be no loss an angel why are you confident like this paul an angel appeared to me already it's not because i'm not human i've seen something and they were taken safely to an island called melita there is something you see people can be ranting up and down oh don't worry my that's why sometimes when people send me text messages apostle i saw an attack on your life they may be right but sometimes i just laugh it over boy this man standing before you is surrounded by mysteries like chariots there is what you must do the moment they tell you oh somebody is about to attack your life and destiny do you know what to do is there a formula god gave you that you get up and say lord this is it and you manipulate life from the secret place and come out to your shock thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and makes through our life the savour of the knowledge of the glory of God there is nothing you are truly looking for that you will ever find if the Holy Spirit does not lead you there are you hearing me there is nothing i don't care what it is there is nothing you are truly looking for success prosperity husband wife job you will never find it if you disregard the holy spirit let me tell you in advance you will never ever find it until the holy spirit leads you there hallelujah Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. You will never find it if it does not lead you there. You can pretend you have found it. You will never find joy. You will never find fulfillment. All of these things people chase after. No. You will never find it disregarding the Holy Spirit. He has become my all he has become my all he will turn an ordinary person see let me tell you something listen this chase for recognition this chase for fame this chase for greatness will keep ending people in utter frustration until the holy spirit leads you there please take what i'm saying seriously I'm yet to see one man that truly found life and all it can give with the true joy and satisfaction without the Holy Spirit. It's not true. 
It's not true. I, I need you to understand that I'm, these things are not just done as a religious jamboree. Some of us have never paid attention to the things of the Spirit. We think if I just come, it's possible to be here right now and your heart is not even with God. You are just here and then you will find out that you will never get that blessing. Are you not tired of trying to find fulfillment outside of him? Why don't you settle down? Come. Be on his side. And see what he will make out of your life. Be magnified. Oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can't do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified see we said this thing years ago and many people thought we were just talkatives and jokers are you hearing what i'm saying this thing i've been saying this thing for years but when you don't pay attention to the things of god your suffering has just begun because there are many people after 20 years 30 years 40 years of a meaningless life of utter frustration they find out that everything they have put their confidence on has failed one by one. The dangerous thing about that kind of failure is it all does not happen in one day. It will keep happening again. After one cycle finishes, another cycle of failure will start. But the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Choose that way now. I choose the way of the Lord for the way for the way of the Lord is the way of me. I choose the way of the presence can guarantee you anything in life when you honor God's presence for you success is an issue of when not if it no longer becomes magic hallelujah I'm teaching tonight on a very powerful topic and I like your heart to be open look 14 Luke 14. Hallelujah. Say after me, my Christianity must produce an evidence. Say it, my Christianity must produce results. Say it like you believe it. My Christianity must produce results. I forbid you from this resultless Christianity that frustrates you and frustrates those around you. When there is an evidence in your life that God is real and that the truths in his word are real, let me tell you the truth. You will compel men to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you will turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things we press in me. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help 
me say it's gotta be more than this hallelujah I can never be a failure in life never 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 I've left that cycle forever till Jesus comes I told you last week understanding everybody say understanding when you have he said in all thy getting get understanding come Mike come climb these stairs no just stay down climb up climb up did you need to think to climb this because you know how to do it go back and do it again this is we call predictability your life can be that accurate and that circumspect that you know that you know that you know that you know that you have come out of certain realms forever your life can be that predictable that you can become a success so for you it's a matter of when not if there are some of us success is still at the realm of if because we are still hoping that one day bless you god will see what i'm doing and then maybe he will just bless me let me tell you in advance you don't need to wait till after 10 years let me tell you now you are wasting your time it will not work that way there are keys he said and i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said by reason of that keys whatever you bind in the earth will be bound in the heavens whatever you lose until you have these keys you cannot command authority in this realm many of us have been listening but we have not been paying attention today is an opportunity again why don't you tell yourself look i want to settle down let me understand this thing once and for all hallelujah i'm preaching tonight on extraordinary accomplishments the cost extraordinary accomplishments colon the cost what does it take to be a sign and a wonder what does it take to be a living wonder what does it take to function in this earth realm as if you are not a normal human being what does it take to ride towards the things that force men to bow to we have been throughout last month we were taking a series on success and i thought we had rounded up until i was praying and the lord told me no there's one more extraordinary accomplishments the cost tonight i want to open you up to the cost dimension of accomplishments in life the cost dimension hallelujah this word cost and price these are two words that many believers hate we hate that word the moment you say cost or price people just resent it and they get angry but when you say gift or reward people say aha this is what i want but the moment you say cost we hate opening up ourselves to the cost implication of life unfortunately let me tell you the truth get it straight and get it this night i don't care who preaches what for you don't mislead yourself you will never never enter the realm of true greatness and extraordinary accomplishments if you deny the fact that there is a price and there is a cost so the first thing I want you to know this night is that extraordinary accomplishment is very costly. It's very costly. It's not just costly. It's very costly. Number two, ignorance and failure is also very costly. So whether you embrace the life that will bring supernatural accomplishments or not 
you are going to pay the price in this life period hallelujah outstanding success had a, a huge price tag it's very costly failure also has a price tag it is also costly the difference is this for accomplishment and success you pay the price before it comes for failure you pay the price after it comes you get that but you are going to pay the price in any way so you can choose to pay it now you don't need to say i claim success no you don't need to claim it if you pay the price now that is your act of faith to show that you have chosen you don't just choose by saying i choose alone he said if you call yourself the sons of abraham you would do what abraham did hallelujah people hate the word cost they hate the word price and so many people especially preachers have tried to create nice messages to explain away the fact that there is a cost implication to supernatural accomplishment let me tell you something go and ask any man whether in the secular world or in the christendom who has risen to and made any level of supernatural accomplishment of whatever sort ask them and they will tell you there is a price to pay hallelujah the one time wealthiest man in america was asked a question he said what is the secret of success and he laughed he said secret number one know what the price is number two pay the price period know what it is pay the price and tonight i pray for you that the fear of paying the price for a supernatural life let that fear leave you because let me tell you something you are afraid of what must come so it's better to develop courage and face it once and for all remember we preached the message give me this mountain in every mountain there are giants if you find a mountain that there are no giants run away every mountain there are giants life is full of men who paid several prices defied certain things and today the world is celebrating them and if you must do much for god there is a price to pay don't let anybody fool you there is a price to pay hallelujah and tonight we will look at the cost factor the cost implication hallelujah if we do not want to end up like many people that we have seen or many believers frustrated humiliated then it's important to pay the price right now i will always quote this scripture lamentations 3 27 he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth now that you have strength why don't you make up your mind to flog it out with destiny so that you can enter the sabbath and rest once and for all the bible says and on the seventh day god rested i've said it again and again if you have not entered your seventh day and you are resting let me tell you life will kick you out of that rest in a painful way you only rest when you have entered your seventh day some from day one they're already seeking rest we live in a generation of comfort we like comfort hallelujah a lot of people like com we love comfort we hate inconvenience no no don't keep me standing for 10 minutes uh -uh, i can't take it ah the sun is too hot go and buy umbrella for me we 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 are addicted to comfort to a to a a degree that it is robbing us of paying the price for a glorious destiny hallelujah someone starts a business the first profit that comes is buying jeans and shoe and buying one one 
rickety car that you keep maintaining it for the next how many years until everything eats up his money but to pay the price and say oh let me just wait let me endure no i want to prove a point i want to prove a point comfort comfort has destroyed a lot of people comfort is good but you see let me tell you something when it gets to a point where it stops you from paying the price then you are you are eating your future in your today and this is the case with a lot of people hallelujah this is what has birthed this false and fake life that people live they try to pretend realms of success they have not yet come into and so they put themselves under unnecessary pressure hallelujah it's very important say after me i will pay the price please say it i will pay the price look at me don't you think this message is not important this night because i am going to be attacking some ugly religious spirits that always think that when you are teaching about success and accomplishment they think it's not spiritual enough i thought we just came and we should be praying or i thought we should come and do this sooner or later your lack of paying attention will punish you to a point that you will backslide spiritually without knowing hallelujah when you become a father and you know that you cannot be praying from morning till night you have the fees of children to pay is that true you have responsibilities at that point you will know that one key does not open every door in the spirit it takes keys and opening up yourself to them may your children never look at you and say daddy what is what is the benefit of all of this christianity may people not look at you in the village and say you are you are an unbeliever i am a christian what is the difference see let me tell you something the kingdom of god is a reward system are you following me now the kingdom of god operates on a reward system so you are rewarded for complying with kingdom principles i made up my mind years ago that i was going to end some things in my life forever and I knew that to do that, comfort will be out of the way. And this is my first encouragement for you this night. Take this unnecessary spirit of luxury and comfort. It's not bad. Pack it up and keep it. A day will come when you will be comfortable indeed. Not now. The Bible says the vision will speak at the end no vision speaks at the beginning he says it in the end it will speak hallelujah another deceitful approach to success is waiting for god to do everything have you seen people like that i know god will do it i know my god will do it are you not the king of the heavens you can do anything you want to do you can bless whoever you want to bless you can cause whoever you want to cause let me tell you straight to the point if that is your philosophy then your suffering has not yet begun the bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the lord he said but the earth has he given to the sons of men if you do not take charge of your destiny you may be very surprised hallelujah I'm going to be talking about three aspects three levels of the cost number one we'll quickly look at the spiritual cost the first cost is the spiritual cost you want to live a life of extraordinary supernatural accomplishments no matter who you are the first price to pay is your spiritual life the spiritual cost hallelujah there are many of you right now 
if i ask you what are you doing towards your success you say i'm trying to look for money i'm looking for capital may god just bless me let me just get money and see what i will do or somebody is running so i say i'm just trying to look for a job i'm trying to look for this and we pay very little attention if at all for some of us our spiritual lives we wake up in the morning 5 30 stand at, 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 at the junction outside and you see everybody waking up in the morning hurrying running from morning until night ask them what they are looking for they tell you i want to move forward i want to make progress i want to make meaning out of my life but the bible says except the lord builds the house he said the word there is not except the lord build it for you except the lord becomes the architect of the house he says they labor in vain and except the lord watches over his city said the watchman watch it in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he give it to his beloved sleep hallelujah let's look at the scripture quickly second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 if you're there say amen verse 5 are you there verse 5 it says this is speaking about the king Uzziah listen please he said and he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God and he said oh I thought it was projected he said as and as long as he sought God what happened God made him prosper is that in your Bible as long as he sought God what happened so his prosperity his accomplishments in life were directly tied to his passion genuine passion for God many of us do not have a passion for god we only love god because we have been told that he is mighty and if you come close to him maybe he will drive demons away from your life and then success will come quickly if you want to be blessed and to do much for god in this kingdom the first requirement is your spiritual life uzziah he sought God. He says, as long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Let's read on. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of God. Look at his accomplishments. Look at the mighty things that he did because God was with him. And the wall of Ashdod and built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. Verse 7. And God helped him. Did you see that now? God did what? God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who dwelled in Gubal and in Milnim. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. Look at all the things that happened in his life because he sought God. Let's read on. And his name spread abroad this is the fame many people are looking for and his name why he sought god he sought the health of his spiritual life first he was not just seeking fame and power in the bible everyone who truly sought god made a mark in this life listen to me the first cost is your spiritual life Let's finish up. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. Nine. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. Look at these accomplishments. At the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. In the desert. He built towers in the desert. Do you know how the desert sand is? The desert sand is not solid. Whatever you build, if you are not careful, but he said he built towers in a desert. Extraordinary accomplishments because he sought God. 
Hallelujah. And he dig many wells. For he had much cattle. Both in Shephelah. And in the plains. Husbandmen also. And vine dressers in the mountains. And so on and so forth. Read verse 11. He said moreover. Uzziah had a host of fighting men. Who is this strange man. That was just breaking records. Smashing records again and again. Defying the things that had been done in his days. The Bible tells us his secret. He said he sought God. He sought God. Look at this kind of exploits. This is our year of supernatural exploits. It doesn't just happen by magic. Let's finish up. We'll read to verse 15. Who went out to war by bands. According to the numbers of their reckonings. By the hand of Jael. The scribe. Hallelujah. And then let's read verse um, 14. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the hosts, shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and slings to cast stones. Verse 15. And he made in Jerusalem what? Engines. The first person in the Bible recorded to invent engines. This guy broke through in several circles. The Bible says that he invented them invented by cunning men to be on the towers upon the bulwarks so that when they came to attack them they used engines to defend themselves extraordinary accomplishments because of the quality of his spiritual life he said to shoot arrows and great stones without listen he said and his name spread where notice the bible in the previous verse said his name spread abroad now see another dimension his name spread far abroad he said for he was marvelously helped the first time he was helped now he was marvelously helped until he was strong have you been paying attention have you been paying this spiritual price oh there is a spiritual price to pray for success and the beautiful thing is that at any point in your life you can start are you hearing what i'm saying so peradventure your spiritual life has not been an issue for you you just believe that somehow you can navigate yourself through life let me tell you right now hear the voice of the lord he said i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in hell to the proportion to which your soul prospereth we have neglected the spiritual prosperity of the soul our intimacy and our relationship there are many things that can distract us looking for money looking for success wanting connection wanting to go here and there wanting to go abroad germany italy dubai everybody wants to go let me tell you something if you pay attention to your spiritual life first you will be helped the holy ghost is called a helper and the bible says uzziah was marvelously helped he enjoyed a rich dimension of the holy spirit let me tell you when god backs you you must succeed it doesn't matter what the odds are say i take my spiritual life seriously the spiritual cost under the spiritual cost the first price you need to pay is revelation and wisdom. Everybody say revelation. You want to accomplish much spiritually in this kingdom. We are talking about your spiritual cost now. Revelation and wisdom. Paul prayed to the church, especially in uh, uh, the, the, the church in, 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 in Ephesus. Ephesians 1 from verse 17 down. He said, I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the heart of your understanding the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know revelation and wisdom what is wisdom wisdom is the ability to take the truth of God's word and put it into practical application to deliver results for you anything you claim to know that is not useful in your life it's not advancing the kingdom it's not improving the quality of your life dump it it's a waste of time 
Wisdom is not just the right application of knowledge. It's the ability to take the truth of God's word and offer solution to life's problems. And the Bible says, Daniel 12 verse 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens. Daniel 12. He said, And they that be wise shall do what? Shall shine as the brightness. You want to be a star? You want to rise above? Get wisdom. Get revelation. Understand how things work in the spirit. When you understand the spiritual laws that are responsible for delivering certain results, I promise you, life will bow to you. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So, pay the price. Let your spiritual growth be constructive. It's not just coming to church and learning all the nice spiritual languages. Go for revelation. This is what we seek to teach. Not revelation of stories, principles, keys, keys, keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you find the key to this door, you can open it. When you find the key to this door, you will open it. When you find the key to that door, you will open it. If you do not have the door, you can pretend the door is open. But sooner or later, life will demand you to go outside and it will be evident that you do not have the key. There are many people pretending to have found it rather than humbling themselves to say, no, look, let's take this thing. Can I tell you something? No matter how long, find it. He said the kingdom of God is like a man who is searching for a pearl. When he found it, he sold everything he had to buy that land. When you pay the price to get revelation it will reward you please listen to me finance in the kingdom has spiritual laws health in the kingdom has spiritual laws victory over sickness and death and failure has spiritual laws success in life has spiritual laws favor has spiritual laws they don't just happen a good marriage is governed by spiritual laws hallelujah longevity in life is governed by spiritual laws how many of these laws do you know that is how you can measure the quality of your life i want to ask you a very practical question how many of these laws do you know hallelujah very important revelation 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 when you love the lord with all your heart he will open you up to revelations first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what god has in store not for them that speak in tongues for them that love him when you love god he will open you up to secrets and brother when you find it you have found it forever when you truly love god and for as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper have you been seeking the lord in your quest for accomplishment have you been paying a, is god part of your success equation I love the Lord with all my heart. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3 verse 3, it says, and Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon loved, that's what, that's, that was the basis of everything that he did. And Solomon loved the Lord. Do you really love the Lord? Enough to seek him with all your heart. To seek to know his ways. And how do you know those who love the Lord? It's very clear. John 14, 21. So don't just say, I love the Lord. We are going to see it now. John 14, 21. Hallelujah. It says, He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. So who is the one that loves God? Please listen. Who is, it? Who is the one that loves God? 
he didn't say the one who claims i love god i love god i love god no -uh. if you truly love him you will abide by his commands he said and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and i will do what manifest reveal myself god is not revealing himself to everybody there are certain people that attract him with their passion for him this is a big secret let's look at verse 23 of the same verse same chapter sorry jesus answered and said if a man love me he will do what he will do what so have you been keeping his words if you have not been keeping his words you do not love him period if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him are you seeing there and make our habitation our abode this is the secret of intimacy love for god the bible says the secret things of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants many people let me tell you the truth many people want to serve god but they don't love the lord they respect god though they are christians they are not doing but that passion for god they don't have it and then they wonder why god seems to make himself real to other people i've shown you the secret of intimacy if you truly love the lord you will attract him by creating the atmosphere that brings his presence love for god hallelujah let me share with you under revelation just three keys that will guide us we are still under the spiritual cost and under that we are still under revelation so love for god i've told you love for god is one key to intimacy the presence of god you can have power without loving god it's impossible to have the presence of god without loving him no number two obedience obedience is very important everything in the kingdom is tied to obedience everything 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 in the kingdom is tied to obedience just one scripture so that we we'll put it under there deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day he said this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you hallelujah he said you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 so obedience 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 doing the word faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said so love the key to the presence of god the key to deep secrets in the spirit obedience the key to committing god in anything you are doing the bible says you are only willing to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete he told cain cain was angry because abel's sacrifice was being received and his own was not being received he told cain he said if you do what your brother did will your sacrifice not be accepted so obedience anytime you want god to show up and to perform in your life make sure you obey his principles the last key that i'll talk about quickly under revelation is the law of tithing let me shock you very quickly tithing has nothing to do with money look at me tithing does not bring money the bible never tied tithing to money let me tell you what tithing does hallelujah sorry many people tithe because they want money wrong tithing as a principle and as a key in the kingdom has nothing to do with financial prosperity it is your giving that brings financial increase are you hearing me tithing opens the heavens see listen listen look at me there's no time we have to touch other aspects and i want us to pray please look at me the bible says god created many trees in the garden of eden is that true but god kept a tithe in that garden of eden i want to show you where tithing started from so long as that tithe was not touched the heavens were open 
God could come in the cool of the day. Is that true? Please answer me. Tithing is one of the spiritual laws that is responsible for open heavens. So whatever you do under that open heavens will now prosper. That's why tithing does not just affect finance alone. Health, longevity, different aspects of our lives. The reason why we preachers only reduce tithe to money is simply because we want the money. Period. The day man touched the tithe, what happened? The heavens were closed and they sent him out of the garden of Eden. Look at how important tithing is to God. So long as man did not touch the tithe, he could enjoy any other three. He touched the tithe, God sent him out. So every many of us are operating under close heavens. You are giving but under close heavens. You are serving God but under close heavens. Let me tell you something. I don't care whatever you do. See, the devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. He operates on legal grounds. Principalities operate on legal grounds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That means you can you don't pray them away you don't pray them away there are kingdom principles that keep them at bay please understand this he said in my name they shall cast out what but he said they overcame them by it didn't say in my name many of us have been praying trying to cast away principalities in our lives no it is your obedience of kingdom principles that keep them far that means if you are not a tighter even god cannot stop the devourer it will take only the blood to speak for you are you hearing me please in the series that are coming i will teach you about the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood because the bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit he said these three are in agreement he said but in the earth realm there are three that three entities that can open any door in this realm the spirit the water that's the word of god and what the blood he said and these three agree anything they agree on that door must open hallelujah these are very deep spiritual principles there are many of you you have prayed and fasted about some things it didn't change that's to tell you that your spiritual approach may be wrong hallelujah let's continue tithing the heavens will open over you everybody say in the name of jesus I receive grace to be faithful. I need my heavens open. See, when your heavens are open, you will know. You will know your heavens are open. One time I was praying, I think around chapel, and the Lord showed me a vision. I looked up and I saw like two ancient gates. They were closing and opening. Closing and opening. I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord told me, this is the heavens opening and closing over people. And this is the faithfulness of tithing. Please take this serious. Tithing does not bring money. Tithing opens the heavens. When the heavens are open, anything done under that open heavens will succeed. You see why some of you have been giving? You have been giving to the poor. You have been giving to the needy. Things are not working because the heavens are closed. The devourer just needs to look at your heavens and know whether he's permitted to come to your life or not. This is a powerful key that many, many ministries, there are many ministries who love God. Great preachers, but they are living under closed heavens. So they don't know why members don't come. Have you seen people complain like that? Members come and go. Members do this and that. I will train people and then they will leave. Let me tell you something. Check it. If you are not careful, the heavens are open. The heavens are closed, sorry. When your heavens are open, you will see extraordinary things that you know only God can do. You can't negotiate this principle. God is not a politician. There's no back door. No shortcut. Hallelujah. 
So have you been faithful in tithing? If you have not been faithful in tithing, stop saying God is responsible for what you are in. You have permitted the devourer. There are many of us who are in business. You don't tithe. Many of us, God blesses us. You don't tithe. See, if you do it out of force, it's not by faith. And whatever is not of faith is sin. You just wasted your time. It is a product of a revelation. How can I eat the tithe of God? Here is my heart, my mind. Make up your mind. Lord, no touching your tithe. If you are faithful, you will live in Eden. When you touch the tithe, you are sent out of Eden. When they sent man out of Eden, toiling and all kinds of things. There are many of you truly, it's not like God is not blessing you, but it does not work. The Bible says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Take this tithing thing serious. The number one key you need to teach people about open heavens is tithing. Don't think this is a gimmick by preachers. If you come and pay the tithe and the preacher eats the tithe, it's God that will punish him. But you do your part. Do not allow anybody's negligence to stop you. Say, am I sure it's not that usher that will carry my money? What is your business? Make up your mind. Buy envelopes. Many of us are owing God. You say, God, let me touch this 5,000. Please, this is an emergency. I must respond to it immediately. And the devourer is saying, go ahead, please. Go ahead. The moment you take it, <laughs> you are just convinced that because you took communion or they made cross with oil on your head, the devourer goes. And you just fall down and stand up and say, thank you, Jesus. The devourer is waiting for you. The moment you come out, the oppression continues. I'm telling you, kingdom principles. Supernatural accomplishment starts with an open heavens. He said, you will see the heavens open. The moment the heavens are open, angelic activities begin in your life. When Jacob saw the heavens open, what happened? Angels started ascending and descending. And Jesus told Nathaniel, he said, you are, you are shouting because you have just seen these things. He said, you will see greater things. What are the greater things? You will see the heavens open and the angels. Every time angelic activities are scarce in your life, check, your heavens may be closed. Hallelujah. Number two, prayer. So, Revelation 1 and then prayer. Prayer. You must pray. You must pray. It's one of the greatest spiritual investments. Now, I've heard preachers, even on TV, talk against prayer. And they say, pray, 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 pray. You pray, you don't pray. All you just need is the word, word, word. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you the honest and sincere truth. The Bible says we will not leave the ministry of tables. I mean, the ministry of we will not concentrate on serving tables we will focus on the ministry of the word and prayer hallelujah a prayerless christian is a powerless christian period whatever destroys your prayer life has killed your christian heritage it's a dangerous spiritual investment that you must make it will build your spirit you will build sensitivity the gifts of the spirit will find expression. The anointing of the spirit will be at work in your life. And the anointing itself is capital. Everybody say anointing is capital. Yes, we only know naira and cobble and dollars and pounds to be capital. Anointing is big capital. Are you hearing me? The anointing can open doors for you that nothing else will open. Anointing is great capital. All men seek for thee. That's what they told Jesus. Why were they seeking for him? Because he had an anointing. Do you know that if you have an anointing, the uncle you are trying to talk to that is neglecting you, he needs something that the anointing upon your life can solve. You concentrate and build that capital. I have entered places today that if I was not anointed, there is no way on earth at this level of life those doors would have opened impossible impossible hallelujah prayer let's look at the second cost 
Spirit move over me. Spirit move over me. Intellectual cost. Everybody say intellectual cost. Say it intellectual cost. So the first cost is your spiritual cost for supernatural accomplishment. Second cost is intellectual cost. Help us, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 5, verse 13. Everybody, be, while you are opening, I'd like you to shout, Knowledge is power. Knowledge. Not, not that school. A long high Say, knowledge is, knowledge is power. Say it again. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Hallelujah. Knowledge is truly power. If you value knowledge and you value information you will do wonders in this earth realm please listen this is where i want everybody to give us our attention because i know for many of us the spiritual cost we are paying it very well but probably we are not paying the intellectual cost knowledge is power isaiah 5 verse 13 everyone read one to read therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with test. Why? Knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. Say information. What you do not know can destroy you. Ignorance is not an excuse in this realm. In the world of champions, you don't give room for ignorance. Many of us are spiritually serious, but we are mentally lazy. We are not willing to pay the price. Preachers, hear me. Emoji, wake up. Many preachers are intellectually lazy. And they wonder why they are not commanding results. Hallelujah. Sustainable success is guaranteed by quality access to information. Your access to quality information about any area of life that you are trusting God to be an ambassador whether business whether your job there are many people who may never be promoted till Jesus comes because they are praying in tongues they are paying spiritual prices but they are neglecting their intellectual price look at me see honesty is good but that's not the only thing that is required in delivering results competence is key and competence is a product of intellectual prowess are you listening to me many nigerians have dreams and visions there are many books dream big have a great vision that's wonderful but just having a dream or a vision may never bring it to pass you must re you must get the knowledge and the information it takes to push that vision from being a dream until it starts walking on two legs everybody say intellectual cost ignorance is very costly i told you very very costly he said i daniel understood by books this book of the law the bible says this book not this chase magazine not this pointless novel this book many of us do not invest in building our intellectual capacity somebody comes and say god is calling me i'm going to be a public speaker i saw it in a vision i saw myself wearing suit like pastor femi you may die and never enter that revelation if you are not ready you think we are going to bring you to come and present a paper for us when you don't you've not read any book on public speaking you don't know anybody hallelujah you're not opening up yourself to learn from people who have gone ahead of you you will never arrive there this is what will frustrate you more many christians are frustrated because they cannot understand why although they are praying although they love god they see that they are lazy intellectually Go to the house of many believers. You don't find anything. Somebody is walking in his job. He's never read any book to improve him. 
does not understand anything about people's skills does not understand anything about leadership many pastors are governing churches all they know is how to pray in tongues and preach well they have no knowledge of corporate leadership they have no knowledge of corporate financing hallelujah principles of conflict resolution they do not know these things they don't care principles of church growth they don't care hallelujah praise the lord it's very important many of us do not pay the price to build ourselves intellectually you believe god is calling you to be a reality a tv show or a hostess or host or marriage and whatever and you sit down people ask you what do you know about marriage is the coming together of a man and a woman to be a husband and wife do you know listen listen see no matter how tongue talking you are are you hearing me if i want to employ people and i see that you are going your your intellectual deficiency is a disadvantage to my corporation do you think i will employ you please answer me so why are you angry with god there are many people who are not interested listen this is important they are not interested in building themselves they don't build capacity how many books do you have in the area you believe god is sending you to see let me tell you we live in a world where the basic knowledge you get from university is not enough are you hearing what i'm saying listen there must be an added advantage the difference between the five virgins who were wise was that they took extra oil there are many people who go into business they don't know anything about the business they just hear somebody went to dubai and went and brought containers you too you stand up carry everything you have home and abroad they go and throw you away from the airport say you are going to dubai they seize all of your goods now you come back god is not faithful i'm a titan no no everybody say intellectual prowess psalms 45 verse 4 can we look at it quickly we're going to pray psalm 45 verse 4 god is doing something in this place he said listen and in thy majesty write prosperously because of what truth information write prosperously because of the truth that you know write prosperously bishop oedeko said something that touched me in a very powerful way he said most restaurants you can go abroad and see certain restaurants and they tell you this restaurant is 50 years old is that true this restaurant is 70 years old the owner has died yet the restaurant is still on in nigeria somebody opens a restaurant after two two years he has fought with everybody in that community till they close the restaurant and the person is a christian everybody say after me your intellect your mind must be transformed for you to accomplish supernaturally i tell you i i feel the fire of god in this place i must burn this enough buy books buy books not trainers buy books not with on buy books not mary Kay. the books will buy you mary Kay. see he said buy the truth sell it not there are certain things i do every day before i sleep every day some of you sleep from morning till night you are just happy lazying around you come and see people reading and you say oh boy you said now wow, what are you reading you keep distracting people there is a name for those people they are called enemies of progress How many of us pay attention there are many of us visitation hopping from house to house hopping to people's office gossiping and discussing things that have no bearing to your future great men hear me are men who have learned to settle down and build their minds that you are a christian is no guarantee for you to allow yourself to be mentally lazy they give you a speech to prepare 
you didn't prepare for it you are not serious about it god has brought favor lack of intellectual preparation kill the favor out of your life hallelujah there are many of you oh god is calling me into decoration what do you know about decoration how many books show me the dvds you are watching about those who have who are champions in decoration and you come and just keep sleeping dirty pieces of paper for people please give me a contract i am a christian i'm your member so what so what oh i can make hair don't patronize that person is an unbeliever patronize me the person patron he said plot me all back you plot like this yet you think that the person will just say okay you are a nice christian are you contending to improve yourself i improve myself every day i'm not satisfied with where i am in every area of my life show me what you are doing to build your mind show me the investments you are making mentally and i can tell you whether you will be part of the world changers or you'll be part of the storytellers are you listening to me very important lay your hands on your head and say after me in the name of jesus i receive grace to build my mind i will buy books i will buy dvds i will build myself in the area i've been called to function i will be the best i will not relent until i am the best say i will not relent i refuse to be a local champion I'm a global champion. Hallelujah. Yes. Make up your mind. Refuse to be a local champion. A brother is, is, is getting married and all he has home and abroad is 200,000. So they called you and gave you 10,000 for decoration. You just did every kind of ugly thing and they say, who did this? They say, you. They say, oh, well done. You just believe that another time you say i'm carrying a proposal to abuja you carry your file and you are moving to go and disgrace yourself in abuja when you go there you will see other people who have worked upon themselves when you see their designs you just stand there as if god failed you please take seriously what i'm saying believers build yourself every day there are four things i do on before i sleep i must build myself spiritually i must build myself corporately i must build myself in leadership what are you doing what do you do with your 24 hours many of you early in the morning they saw you in samaru later on you are in high dogo later on you are around and you just come and say I'm, I'm, i had a busy day doing busy but doing nothing nothing you went to go and gossip jakes you now run to another person you did this stop it if you have been doing that great leaders are not like that if somebody comes and is disturbing you don't be afraid to tell the person sorry i'm doing some studies i'm praying some of you are embarrassed you don't want to be bad ah. create a protocol around your life let nobody just jump in and out of your life because they think they want to see you you are studying at that point illumination is coming somebody just bashes in or buy anything for the boys politely tell the person I'm, I'm in a period i'm birthing something that can take my family from where they are to mount ararat and take them to a place where they will be great do you not know samadhyam he says ideas rule the world there are many of you if only you pay attention the truth is god tried for you you are very intelligent you are just not serious you can't sit down and pay the price and you know something listen the truth is if you really really want to be great god will open the way for you the reason is many of us do not want it bad enough that's why the way has not opened i don't care what it is you want if you desire it truly he said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart there is a level of passion when i want things i get them oh yes i get them i will pay any price to get it 
For me, pain is not an issue. Hallelujah. When I travel and people who have gone ahead of me in any area of life are talking, I get a biro. I'm just listening to them. Ardently. Or I'm just typing on my phone. I'm listening to the wisdom they are bringing. While I'm listening, I'm reaching out to my pocket, finding any seat there to connect. You see, let me tell you, I, I taught this already in commanding results, the law of honor. Things do not just happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Things are made to happen. The truth is, whatever area it is you are trusting God to go to, there are people who are carriers of that grace. There are people who have that knowledge. You want to plot. You believe you want to start a saloon. Have you gone to somebody who has, who has a saloon and tell the person, see, I have 2,000 naira. Can I give you this 2,000 naira and be coming every day and be learning for one hour? I plead with you. Say me. I started plotting somebody. This, all these people. This arrogance is what has kept a lot of people. Humility. If you do not humble yourself, you will never build your mind. Don't wait for people who have solution to come and meet you. Doctors don't look for sick people. They establish an institution called a hospital. And the sick people look for them passionately. And even in the hospital, there are different kinds of words. According to your desperation, there is a word called emergency word. When you really need help badly, they take you to that word. Life has emergency word. There are many people who you can get tired of your life. That you say, no, I'm not going to any, I'm going to an emergency ward. Build yourself. Build yourself. Oh, God wants to make me a pastor. And God showed me in a vision. I'm going to have 1,000 branches. My brother start getting, going for knowledge before you die early. The trouble of managing yourself is even killing you. And you want to manage 1,000 branches full of members. See, this is why God does not answer the prayer of a lot of people. They, they want crowd. They do not know the complexities that come with managing people. Every day there is a case somewhere. Somewhere. This is what was wearing Moses away. And his father Jethro in law, um, uh, his father in law Jethro began to give him a key on how to, he would have died for nothing. There are men, men of God who are dying because they are doing everything everything because they do not understand the principle everybody say i receive grace to build my mind jordan bookstore is there you can start let me see how many of you believe that you are going to do business let me see your hands business people whether potentially or presently what are you doing in that line of business keep your hands lifted so that i will what are you doing are you doing anything or you are just coveting other people who have gone ahead and say, Hey, God, oh, this is lucky. Oh. Please drop your hands. Take it seriously. You want to do business, behave like a businessman. Don't behave like a thief. How many of you believe that God has called you into one form of leadership or the other? Whether corporately, almost everybody should be lifting their hands. You are either a father or a mother at least. What are you doing to build? No, I'm serious. What are you doing to build it? I build myself every day. I interact with the brightest of the brightest of the brightest. I love everybody, but I will not learn from everybody. I want to shorten my journey as much as possible. So I'm not ready for anybody to bring his mediocrity and make and punish me. Then after many years, go for the best. Say go for the best. Tell your neighbor, go for the best. Don't let loyalty and sympathy make you just camp around people. You know your brother is good, but the truth is he cannot sing very well. You want to be a musician, collect his own tape so that he won't feel angry, but go and look for people who have earned the right to command authority in that field. Loyalty has stopped a lot of people from moving forward. A man of God who is not a businessman doesn't know anything about business is organizing a business expose and preaching all kinds of messages that don't make sense he's a good man of God but a bad businessman and a lot of people carry all of those principles and life flogs them back 
love your pastor honor your pastor if he's not a businessman look for a businessman and listen to him hallelujah finally the third cost is the physical cost If you're angry with me that's a sign that god is working on you seriously you know i won't stop no way physical cost the third one it takes diligence and work not necessarily hard work but work to bring forth extraordinary accomplishments look at me Everybody say laziness. Say one more time. Laziness. For the last time, laziness is not my portion. In Jesus' name. If you want to accomplish things supernaturally, extraordinary accomplishments, three things must suffer momentarily in your life. Number one, your time. Number two, your energy. Number three, your resources. The proof of love the clearest proof of love is the investment of time you must have time for anything you love or you consider serious enough how much time are you putting on ground how much energy energy everybody say energy see great people in life are workaholics are you hearing me they work their life out until they enter that realm of greatness Praise God. I've been ministering in the last three weeks, traveling, ministering, doing a lot of things. But it does not stop me from doing the things I have to do. Hallelujah. From this place, I have another trip again. Traveling up and down. Yet, you must give your energy. Everybody say energy. Some of you like sleep. Once it's 9 30, you're already nodding. Even if you are talking with somebody. You just do like this. And the next thing you are sleeping. No. No. If you love sleep, you will kill your, your future. Put your legs inside cold water. And said, my eyes, you can sleep if you want to sleep. But my life must move forward. If you make that determination, no devil in existence will stop you. Physical efforts. There are some of us who are lazy. You hate pain. You hate anything discomforting you. You hate embarrassment. Right now as I'm talking, you're feeling embarrassed. Why are you embarrassing us? See, every great man in life is one who has been able to kill embarrassment. Where you open up your heart and say, flog me, just lash it, let it come to build me. Many of us have lived in a place where everybody has lied to us. Either because you're a pretty lady or you are a handsome guy everything you do is right i tell you the truth if what you are doing is wrong i will tell you change proverbs 14 verse 23 we'll look at a few scriptures and we'll pray your destiny must move forward in the name of jesus proverbs 14 verse 23 let's read together one to read in all what? In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips. Cheap talk. There are many people that talk, 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 talk. But the Bible says in all labor. Put your talk to work. In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips tended to what? your talk with tremendous efforts and tell yourself no matter what it will cost me say in the name of Jesus no matter what it will cost me I am prepared to pay the price to be the best in my field in the area God has called me I will be outstanding I will pay the price the price of time the price of energy the price of my resources 
Some of you are on scholarship, students. A few of you, God is blessing you. 50,000 or 75,000 or your 5 or 10,000 is coming. Every time you get it, you are always running to the restaurant. Every time you get it. Boys, it don't land. You can't be great that way. You can't be great that way. So you create a momentary feeling of being successful. Why don't you pay the price and create the real one? Stop pretending like you are there when you are not there. If your capacity has not reached for Indomie, take Gary and use them. I, I, are you following me now? If your capacity has not reached for baked beans, get the normal one. Shake off all those things from it and cook it. Give it thanks knowing that it will change. There are too many people living fake lives. Fake lives. You create an impression you do not have the resources to defend. Somebody comes. You see my watch now. You say I must buy this kind of watch. You go and pack your whole finances and frustrate yourself. And you are suffering alone. And God will say so it when you buy it. And that's frustration for you. See let me tell you. Say after me there is time for everything. Say it. Be careful what you covet about people. And don't put yourself under pressure. You don't need to prove a point to anybody. If you have only one trouser that has torn, sew it honorably and wear it. Let the people laugh very well so that when you become great, they won't, they won't say it's magic. They saw you. Some of you will charter a car from Samaru to Sabo. You say, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Hurry for what? 250 naira that you can buy a book. You have not gotten to that level. Be patient. The jeep will come. Nobody is arguing it. But it won't come now. Pay the price. Sister, you will buy the human hair. For now, use what is available. Use what is available. Don't carry 10,000 and spend it. And you are just moving around. Fake lives. Use that, that resource to build yourself. Say amen. amen. If your own has not reached for Shagalinku, go to Zinc House. Go to Com Market. Go anywhere. Be honorable about it. There was a time it was Zinc House we used to go to. That was, that was our level. And let me tell you in all sincerity, even at that level, we were better than a lot of people. By that means, it's just that we decided to push our lives down because we knew there was there were higher jobs. There are many of you. If you get one million today, today you will buy a car of seven hundred thousand, a phone of one hundred and fifty thousand, and a suit of hundred thousand. That's all. And you just come and then give a testimony. Say the heavens open, and I'm here. My car is there. My suit is here. From that day, you start suffering. Nothing else about your life. Stop pretending it. You will get there one day. For now, invest in yourself. waste your time you think people are looking at you let me tell you they are not looking at you they have enough problems in their lives to face don't deceive yourself they are not looking at you at all they have serious issues about their own lives proverbs 10 verse 4 we're rounding up proverbs 10 verse 4 he become a poor that deals with what a slack a lazy a slothful hand he said but the hand of the diligent will do what the hand of the diligent will bless him and with that resource he will be able to do big things for the kingdom next scripture proverbs 12 verse 24 the hand of the diligent again God says scriptures about hands about hands the hand of the diligent shall bear rule in other words shall lead the hand of the diligent will take him above he will take charge he will dominate he will break records he will set the pace but the slothful hand shall be made to pay a price shall be under tribute 
One last scripture. Proverbs 20 verse 4. Above all. The sluggard will not plow. And what is his excuse? There is cold. Therefore shall he do what? Therefore shall he do what? Now is the time to sow. Many people, let me tell you, thank God you are hearing this now. Because there are people who think you are wasting your time. I promise you, they will pray in tongues and still beg in the days to come. It's not a false prophecy. It's the truth about life. Many of the great people in this country are the classmates of some of our parents. True or false? Where were our parents when they were paying the price? And they get angry when they see them. This is what happens to poor people. When they don't pay the price and they see others that go ahead. See, every time you accomplish supernatural things, you create an effect that agitates people because of the frustration you respond to critics not by replying by producing more results are you ready to take your life from where it is to the next dimension i've shown you how these are keys your eatery can be the best god didn't lie when he spoke to you are you hearing me your business can be the best your ministry can be the best. Your life, that book can be a bestseller. You just need to find out. Find out from those whose books have been bestsellers. You wrote your book, it was great, but it was not a bestseller yet. Find out. God has told you that he's putting the word of the Lord in your mouth and you will be a prophet to the nations. As it is, nobody knows you. Go and get this spiritual capital of the anointing. Pay the price. And I tell you, if, if I were a prophet, if that God called me into the prophetic ministry, I would have done things that would shock people. Many people are not ready to pay the price. Everything is available, but there is a price tag on it. If you can pay it, carry it. The best car in the world is still on sale. If you have the money today, you can go and order it. Nobody will stop you. All the packages in life, according to the measure of grace and your sacrifice and ability. Every time I stand before Koinonia, I don't see. See, let me tell you, a time will come. The people you see today will be the ushers in ENI. Just the ushers. Because I know there is a world dying. That cannot resist the solution we are bringing. Impossible. Our job is to contend for greater grace. Oh my God. I'm a success. Hallelujah. I have the capital of the anointing. I have the Holy Spirit. The wisdom of God in me. And I will pay that price. Rise up on your feet. I bring you words of comfort. It will not always remain like this. Your life will change. Lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Supernatural accomplishments. Extraordinary accomplishments. Like Uzziah. Make sure you are praying. You are shining like the brightness of the firmament. You may start from Zaria, but I see you going far. Don't say I cannot get here. Walk by the principles. They will open you up to those gates. The nation will stand and give you an ovation. The nations will reward your sacrifice. Inspire yourself. I cannot be a failure. And David encouraged himself. Hallelujah.
very quickly we are going to pray three prayer points first is your spiritual life how many of you know the anointing is capital i've shared it with you now the anointing can make somebody come and sow a seed in your life that your your business for for 10 years cannot give i why are you neglecting it and one river came out of eden it parted itself into dimensions you are going to pray say lord i value your presence i value your anointing that anointing i take it like a capital lift your voice and pray hallelujah the anointing my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil power to heal the sick power to deliver the oppressed access in the spirit that will give me a seat among the great i refuse to be an ordinary preacher i'm full of the holy ghost walking in signs and wonders that will confound men i'm stepping into deep dimensions of power of grace i respect your anointing i respect your anointing oh god pray you need the capital of the anointing you need the capital of the holy ghost the greatest gift and the bible says the gift of a man the gift of the holy ghost the gift of the anointing they told jesus all men seek for thee all men seek for thee rich men seek for thee blessed people seek for you because of what you carry if you carry grace they will look for you if you carry power they will look for you if you carry unction they will look for you if you carry fire they will look for you they will invite you they will sow into your life they will bless you my spiritual life i receive your fire oh god it's not a waste it's a glorious investment that will separate you regardless of your lineage regardless of your barrier regardless of any factor there is a world dying out there they need the anointing they are willing to honor it they are willing to invest in it they are willing to reward it when you become anointed you will be above hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord during my birthday i was amazed at all the gifts that i got from people all around this nation and even from people outside of this nation many who have been blessed by the grace anointing is capital get this revelation when you pay the price if you get authentic grace there are hardly any families that invite me today that may not package something there are some of you right now you came here you left different places you package seeds some gifts in kind in cash you are waiting for the grace to sow years ago you were still alive but you did not come to me because there was no grace that means if i increase the grace a time will come i will start attracting a kind of people anointing is capital hear me he said because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows i hardly pay for things in my life right now i hardly pay for anything because everybody is scrounging to pay something for me that's what the anointing can do in your life stop struggling go for the anointing go for grace go for fire 
go for power and see the way it will raise you all other factors notwithstanding there are people who would never listen to me but they have been compelled by the power of his presence upon my life my age notwithstanding it has opened doors for me my age notwithstanding my level of exposure notwithstanding do you know that the anointing is capital it can end inferiority in your life when you have something men will come to drink of it he said gentiles will come to my life prayer point number two you're going to say lord i've been intellectually lazy i don't buy books i don't read but i repent this night and i begin to build myself i study by books lift your voice and pray lord i go for books i go for tapes i sit down with relevant materials along the area that i'm trusting lights to break forth for me koinonia pray koinonia pray he said then shall your life break forth then shall your life break forth the power of information if you know what to do greatness is yours for the taking if you know what to do and Uzziah invented engines pray my mind is blessed I am not God pray I study books I buy exercise books I study every day I sit under mentors I sit under men that carry the things I need whether in business whether in leadership there are men who have gone ahead already listen to them receive mentorship from them through books through tapes prophesy to yourself i'm an extraordinary leader i'm an extraordinary entrepreneur i'm an extraordinary business businessman i will shake this country with my ideas i will shake this country go ahead and prophesy i will do what has not been done before i will create a new ways in the financial world in the labor world in the it world in the arts world hallelujah last prayer point last prayer point look at me last prayer point you're going to pray and ask the lord you're going to say lord give me such grace that i will not be afraid of pain and embarrassment these two things if you can conquer pain and you can conquer embarrassment i salute you because you must be a world champion pain embarrassment these two things if you are still conscious of pain whether in the cold whether in the rain you will invest time you will invest energy you will invest resources lift your voice and pray let pain oh god not be an issue for your people may they know no pain may they know no pain may they be men fearless men strong men of grace men of audacity men of audacity who will pop their eyes their hands in the eyes of the enemy men of faith fearless courageous strong prophesy say i can make it i can make it yes i can burn that idea great men are those who have survived much pain great men are those who have survived what ordinary men cannot survive great men are men who have endured great men are men who have tried and didn't stop they fell didn't stop they were weak didn't stop until they emerged as champions 
Rakata, Aka Prakata Lemos, A Protocote, Rakata Lemos. Hallelujah. I speak a message of hope. Some of you are like Samson. Hear me. For whatever reason, your hair has been cut. Some, even your eyes have been plugged. And your family members are laughing at you to scorn. But I tell you something. When Samson stood near those pillars, his hair began to grow again. The Bible says, is there hope for a tree? Although it be cut short. I bring you a word of hope. If the devil hit you and he did not hit you from the root, he only wasted his time. Because God will take that as a pruning and he will shoot you above and beyond. Hallelujah. So get books. Get tapes. Get serious. You know any of your friend that is not serious? Don't criticize them. Encourage them in love. For many of you who Satan is using your yesterday against you, right now, I silence the voice of that accuser of the brethren because the Bible says that judgment has been declared upon him. Your mistakes of yesterday cannot follow you into your tomorrow. There is a brand new day. You can rise again. You can glow again. You are still that champion. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. The miracle is not in what you have lost. The miracle is in what you have left. If you have ears to hear and two legs to walk again, you will fall again. You will become a mighty tree. Everybody remain standing. All of this will happen only when your spiritual life is put in check. And I know that there are many of us, the Lord brought you here tonight. Some of you have never truly made a decision for Jesus. You've had preachers again and again and again and again. One of the secrets of our lives is that we are committed to turning many into righteousness. Daniel 12 verse 3. It says, they that be wise shall be like the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. It's an opportunity that you will become a star. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord. But honestly, you have derailed from the path of the spirit. And you have failed again and again and again. And tonight you are hearing the word of the Lord. Listen, whether you are inside or outside, there is love for you. This is a place of hope. Are you hearing me? The Bible says there is hope for a tree. You are that tree because the Bible says you will be like a tree. The Lord is about to plant you tonight by rivers of living waters. So that with any season you will still be fruitful. I'd like you to leave your seat right now. And come out here. There are many people. Go ahead. Go ahead and take that step. Go ahead and take that step inside and outside. Don't wait for somebody else to come. You are the first to come. There are many people inside and outside. Appreciate them as they are coming. Lord, I need you in my life. Lord, I need Keep coming. Don't let any devil stop you. This is the beginning of a new season. Don't say everybody knows my face. There's no time for that right now. Come and stand before his presence. I can do nothing. I can do nothing without you. Without you. There's no life. There's in me. no life to So I need you in my life. So I need you in my life. said come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden the lord is still ministering to me that there are two people who are supposed to be here as i'm talking to you the holy ghost is telling you leave your seat and come out 
what are you afraid of there are two people the lord is showing me two people honestly speaking the lord is showing me two people two people leave your seat and come the holy ghost is ministering there is one more person left god cannot lie impossible god cannot lie hallelujah lift your hands those of you in front be proud of it this is not a mortuary don't come as if no it's so, if i give you a gift you will rejoice when you want to give people speech and price don't they come out you call them out this is the same thing god is giving you a gift hallelujah mean it from your heart don't recite it as a poem recitation does not bring new birth it's a sincere desire from your heart say after me lord jesus i have come to the end of myself and i love you with all my heart i know you are the only one who can help me and tonight i have heard your word take my destiny mold me make me a wonder i denounce sin and satan i declare old habits are gone bad habits are gone i am a new creation in christ according to the truth of god's word i have eternal life in my spirit i'm saved i'm a child of god holy spirit come and live in me grant me grace to live a victorious life my generation will hear my voice from today forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus let me pray for you father look at these ones they are your children your sons and daughters they have come in response to your call lord let their conversion be authentic may they never go back to the things that they are coming out from right now i impart upon you grace in the mighty name of jesus christ from today you will be extraordinary and you will do mighty things for the kingdom in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord please look up god bless you thank you for this great decision would like to follow you pastor jakes would like to meet with you personally and to talk with you and pray with you hallelujah praise the lord i want you to follow the usher he will have your detail the gentlemen waving their hands just turn back and follow them they'll have your details and when they have your details they'll have a personal time with you and they'll discuss further and bless you god bless you please follow them appreciate them koinonia hallelujah very quickly those who are worshiping with us for the first time now please i need you to understand this is not a ritual we call people out to recognize them to honor them and to bless them these three things to recognize them to honor them and to bless them so all the people who are coming if this is your first time of worshiping with us in koinonia i like you to leave your seat if you came with somebody and the person is not coming tell the person i want you to be blessed you must be blessed push the person forward god bless you appreciate all of them thank you for coming outside koinonia is this the best you can do thank you may god bless all those who invited them may god keep inviting your destiny helpers to your life in the mighty name of jesus for those who leave your homes your offices and watch a lot of people and don't invite them grace for you in the name of jesus the bible says do the work of an evangelist